Aye, good talking right. point for you. But with all of these, right, I always start, how did we meet? Mm-hmm. Do you remember how yes, you met? Yes, absolutely. So go for it. It was a Christmas single, wasn't it? It was. So yes. that was a that three year ago? This three, four, four, four years ago, four year ago I've, heard, I've, he- I've heard of you for years. Right? All right. Because right, we've, okay. we've got all the same friends, yep. people that we know, but we just never, for some reason, cross paths. Cross paths, yep. Again, I always found that, see, you're, you're a good musician. It's difficult to tie you, up with see, other musicians. See, you go on Facebook, right? Uh huh. And I bring up you, it's something like 20 mutual friends. Right. And we'd never cross paths, <laughs> and we live 15 minutes away from each other. Yep. And ah, that, it's crazy, it's crazy. Huh? Great. But uh, that Christmas single, I'd actually never um, officially sang or done. Oh, really? Or done rhythm. Right. And you know, loads of people were like hated lockdown. See all that, like your your regular gigging musicians. I wasn't a regular gigging musician, mm-hmm. right? I played one gig a week. Right. Accompanying someone else. Right. Okay. Right. And uh, so I'm doing lead guitar. Back of backing vocals. Yep. I wasn't even confident doing my backing vocals, right? Right. Um, so me, me and Liam would be jamming. See if he, if he was knackered. Mm-hmm. Say we just, it'd be a bit where we both sing and he would be like, oh, I'll just let you sing it. Right. I felt weird doing that. Aye. Right. Right. But the lockdown was the best thing that ever happened, right? Because you know what happened? I was like, right, everybody shut down. I thought, like I've done lots of recordings, uh-huh. I was like, I think I can sing, but I've just never really sang in front of people. Mm-hmm. I'm going to switch over to rhythm, start singing. Right, okay. Lockdown allowed us to like start doing gigs from here. Yes, I mean that. Right, so you've got the cup, you're doing gigs in front of people, uh-huh. but you're not in front of people, you're at the comfort of your own little man cave, your uh, own you're, house. You're in your own wee space. You've got comments coming up and stuff, but that's what gave us the confidence to get into <laughs> it. But you're... Um, Ah, your sort of Christmas single was kind of like the first sort of right. dipping my toe properly into I'll, being an actual singer. I'll be honest with you, that surprises me because I would never have thought that. When, but when I, I had, been, down. but yeah. I'd been recording for about ten years. Only I guess probably need to hear these recordings. Right, okay. Just me writing songs and stuff like that. Right, so I'm okay. like, I think, saying so you're like, I think I've got a good voice, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure because a lot of singing is confidence, Aye. and I had zero confidence. That's, um, I think that's how I get away with. I mean, I, I sing a few songs, obviously, in my band and what have you. Um, I've been, but you'll notice in that Christmas charity single, I'm nowhere near it in terms of the singing voice mm. because I think I'm mining along to some of the <laughs> merry, merry Christmas bits. Yeah. But um, no, no, I mean, for me, that was an opportunity to like follow yourself, um, obviously, other people. Like, it was just that, a, it was an know. interesting idea. And we'll maybe talk about that more in, on part two. Cool. Right? No worries. So, see for this one. Mm hmm. Are you are you born bred in Denny? Most of my life in Denny, so basically I was born and bred. Uh, well, so I was born Earth. That's where I'm kind of my family. Right, okay. And I come back. I mean, I moved to Earth when I was about three. To Stennis Muir, stayed there for, I think, for about a year or something. And then moved to Denny, but I right. been in Denny for about thirty six years. So growing up, were you into music right from a very early age? Very. And if so, why was when your parents were they into music? So. When I was about four, in fact, I still stayed at Stennis Muir, I'll never forget it, my dad, my dad learned four chords on a guitar and thought yeah. he was faking Hendrix, all right? He C, he D, E minor. C, C, A minor, F and G, okay? Right, okay. And I remember him strumming the guitar and I remember him saying, you are we shot? I said, I still mind that I stayed in my living room. So, my mum had, had your dad never... Played. No, he, he so, learned a, a, a few chords. But for, did he just Sunday. fancy what just I, fancy I, I that? Trying the guitar. Aye, that was it. Because right. he was never. I mean, I had my uncle. So I, I, I believe come back to my, my special uncle Craig, who was a massive influence on me with, with guitar. Um, but I mean, I'm trying to think who would have influenced my dad musically. And I, I, I can't think. Or was it that's just something he just fancy that, trying? Know, I should know that, and I don't. Uh, but when I ask him that, I was actually talking to him on the way over here. But. Um, so my dad let me hold the guitar, great. Yep. Then when I was five, I got my very first classical guitar. Right, okay. Uh, and my uncle Craig, um, who stayed in Stirling at the time, he stays away in the Philippines now, um, he used to give me lessons every single Saturday. Um, I used to go to I'm his I'm guessing house. he properly played then, you know, he's he given lessons. Great yeah. player, absolutely brilliant player. And again, what I liked, now, now reflecting on it, looking back, what I, I think I really liked 
about how he taught me was it wasn't all the kind of fancy lead guitar stuff for yep. something you got in my opinion you shouldn't have just jumped right into lead guitar to me in fact I heard um, Keith Richards talk about this he says right. everybody should learn or what he calls the gut the gut string guitar mm. i.e. the classical yep. guitar get the fingers used to it start learning your chords that way you've got a good foundation and then start to build it's a little it. bit like see drummers yep you always hear see, see professional drummers right they can be technically outstanding mm-hmm. every single one of them I'm thinking more kind of the rock stuff right because mm-hmm. that's what I like technically outstanding every single one of them says when you're learning drums go and learn ACDC straight rock right straight forward that's hard to do if you can master that you can then progress onto anything and it's a wee bit it's the same idea but obviously for guitar totally 100% Um, so as I said Uncle Craig he would then introduce me to all these different artists no don't be wrong my dad my dad was a massive who's your dad listening to uh, he was listening to Elvis he was a big Elvis fan still is both of them absolutely love Elvis um, so my uncle Craig, I still remember the very first, my very first lesson that I learned, it was G and E minor, C and D, and the song was uh, Marie's the name of the latest flame, so, <laughs> uh, an Elvis song, Right. and of course me being an Elvis fan, because I was, I was listening to Elvis, yeah. I'm actually playing what I'm hearing, Aye, this is crazy, this is brilliant, it was, huh? it was total new to me, the weird thing is, I, I might be talking to a couple of students about this, there's not really a time where I can remember where I didn't play a guitar. I, I, there's a the other thing as well. Because a five, was, four, five year old is is very young. Yeah. Most people I speak to, right, are like I, I. I would class myself as being young. I was ten. Right. Okay. Most people I know are fourteen, fifteen before yeah, they even touch get it into enough. it, and uh, and some of them even later. Yeah. And that, but four or five. That's, five, that's no, pretty young. Five, no, five, five year old. Was there any other instruments, or was it just guitar you loved? Just guitar. Back then? Just guitar. Right. Guitar only. And um, again, was that a thing of because that's that's all I'm, I'm, I'm known. Did you stick at it? Aye, no. Yeah. There was one point. Now let me get this right. So when I was five, I went to Uncle Craig for lessons. I'll, I'll go through the kind of guys that had right. a major influence on me. So Uncle Craig, he taught me the fundamentals. Don't yep. know, as, long as, my, as, as well as my dad, my dad would show me mm-hmm. a couple of wee chords or whatever, um, a couple of wee different picking things. Um, so that there, I learned the concept of songs. I learned the concept of a format of a song when I was five, six years old with Uncle Craig, like intro, verse, chorus. And, and also, you're, you're not needing... 17 chords to make a song absolutely not and um, again I think that was one of the best lessons that I, I could have ever learned from Uncle Craig was you've got how I like to think about it is you've got your fundamental chords you've got your minors you've got your majors yep but when you I mean how often would you use an E7 um, flat and fifth sharp and ninth no I mean it's very very rare unless you're in jazz or something exactly <laughs> jazz guitar um, or the Hendrix called, you know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. Something like that. Something like, unique like that. But that was certainly something off Uncle Craig was the fundamentals, but I tell you one good fundamentals. Uh, he worked away quite a lot because he was on the rigs. Yep. Um, so a few years of that went by. And then I ended up going to a guy called Andy Halliday. Um, Andy had a guitar studio in Bonnybridge. I was about to say, I know he, that name, but... Oh, trust me, Andy, what a... Fucking player he was, he was shit all me. Andy Halliday. Right, so, okay. um, and Andy Halliday had his own guitar. He used to build his own guitars, but I'm still good pals with Andy. Mm-hmm. I talked to him now and again on, on uh, social media. He says in uh, Norway, I'm sure it is now. Um, what Andy taught me, Andy was very technical. He showed me the importance of getting these fingers working individually. Yep. So, Monk Craig was all about the chords, mm-hmm. and it was all about individual. Let's get these fingers um, working. They used to call them like smart fingers, yep. where you would run these different drills up and down the fretboard. Like scales and everything not, like that. Not even so much uh, no. scales, even not. It was just more about just wanting to see your digits move. Yep. So I done a couple of years with Andy, um, and again, absolutely excellent. Absolutely loved it. Then. I'm trying, I think if I, so I think Andy then moved away so then I had to go and find another guitar teacher so every time you get taught of someone they move away move away aye <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was alright you know what I mean 
But is it that thing where the student becomes a master and then they get embarrassed and just shift off? No, not at all. Man. I mean, I'm, I'm always, I'm always a, a big. A, a, to me, that you can never stop learning. They get to, I, I get even beginner students. I get, and they, because it's maybe their first time playing a guitar, they'll think of something that I just never thought because I'm that used. To, I'm that much in my wee, not my bubble, but you know what Fine. I mean. I'm, and I'll go, Ken, I never thought about it that way. That's a really interesting way, and it gets me thinking. How long have you been teaching? 15. Guitar, 15 years. Here's a question for you. Is it the same nowadays? Or f- what I mean by that? I know that's it's, 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 See, my daughter. Mm-hmm. Right, you, I can remember. She, she's mm-hmm. going to be 18 soon. Mm-hmm. Years ago, when she started primary school, Dad, go and show me the guitar. Mm-hmm. Right, teach her E minor, something yep. nice and basic. And uh, ten minutes of playing it, oh, I can't play this. No patience. Down. Right. Aye. Yep. And uh, I wonder. It seems to just be the world that we live in. Is you're not mm-hmm. used to having to wait mm-hmm. for anything. Is that? Do you see that with people I learning s- nowadays? I see. Or does it depend who it is that's learning? I think it depends. First of all, on who it is and w- and how they've came. To want to learn the guitar, mm. I think that's really important. Yeah, because what, what? See, when I was learning the guitar, I wanted a guitar. Yeah. Right. My parents held off for a year because uh-huh. right? it's it's an expensive. Absolutely, thing. I definitely a, ex- expensive thing to to buy to not get used. Yep. Right. Year later, I still want a guitar. Right. Get my guitar for yep. Christmas, whatever it was. And um, right, if you're getting a guitar, you need to go to guitar lessons just to learn the basics. Yep. Right. So I'm going to, I don't know if you remember a, a guy called um, Jim Graham. Jim, oh, you uh, know, the music shop, f- was it music shop? No, 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 no. so he, he was the the main guitar tutor in Falkirk area. All right, okay. In the early 90s. Right, okay. Right. Right. And he taught everyone, I think he'd won student of the, the year award, and all that. like he was a good guitarist. Mm-hmm. And I think what happened was he'd had a stroke later in life. Oh, that's a shame. And he was still able to play, but I just, it was like, yep. it was like 80%. Aye. Right? But he'd, he'd done group lessons at one of the high schools in Falkirk. Mm-hmm. It's not there anymore, it got knocked down. Right, right okay. Um, unfortunately, he's passed away now, but I'd went to him, and so it'd be like four or five to class, mm-hmm. and it was, Everyone got the same book, right? Step one, and it was like how to read music and all that. Yep. Hated it. But I'd go and do that, uh-huh. come home, and every single day I'm sitting down just with stuff on. I'm going to just try and learn that. So that was like my parents were like, you know, I'm not too bothered if he's if he's learning this or he's learning as long as if he's wanting to sit and pick that thing up and I'm not saying to him, go and do that, that's fine. Yeah. And that was the difference, is that I didn't, I wanted to learn to play it. I didn't yeah. have to be told to play no, it. No, totally, I, I totally get where you're coming from. I mean, that, I think, obviously, I've always said that we, we were lucky and we grew up in the late 80s, 90s, okay? Yeah. Music was massive, bands, massive. Yeah. Technology has, I don't want to use the word destroyed that, but certainly technology has had an impact on it. Because how many bands do you see, young bands at high schools now? I mean, it used to be a case when I was at Derry High. You couldn't get a practice room because every band was in your well, life. Oh, you're in there, they're in there, and that does not yeah, exist well, anymore. My, do- my daughter's left school now, she finished high school. I think it was only maybe last year, I said, so last year, maybe last year, the year before, I said to her, Do any of your friends play guitars or. Oh, that, you know, and she's like, Oh, maybe one or two of them. Do they try and start a band with it? And it was like, This would be like social death. Yes. How embarrassing I, to start a band. See, when I was at school, I, I, it was the coolest I, thing I, ever. I'm like, right. and the thing you were wrong, there wasn't very many people to pick from, right? But starting a band in my head was the coolest thing Absolutely. you could ever do. And I wanted to do it from when I was about eleven years old, mm-hmm. and I did. I kind of I was in bands from when I was about eleven. Yep. Total crap. <laughs> but you're playing with other guys jamming, and that was me up until the new. Aye. No, right. And I'm like, what happened? It's a lost art, in my opinion. It is a but very, it'll probably come back around. Oh, I'm hoping it comes back around because it's something I think is <coughs> needed. I think the music industry, and not to go on a tangent here, but I think music industry is, is in need. 
it's needing something to me the last big thing that happened in music and people might go ah, come on but that's very cliche this, probably I think it's going to be ones, the it's going to be Oasis to me Oasis was the last big kind of a band massive band movement in my opinion certainly um, in the, U- the UK oh, definitely in the UK yeah and, so sorry I'll rephrase that in the UK I would yeah. say that's de- definitely been in the last a big movement but going back to just when you're talking about kind of lessons and group lessons and what have you I mean that was something that, that I say shouldn't funny enough I talked to Ty Zamora from Alien Ant Farm mm-hmm. I was talking to him a few weeks ago and that was something him and I were discussing we were talking about that kids nowadays don't realise how lucky they are they can jump onto YouTube and they can pause that video and they can see what chord that, yep. that guy is playing or that person's playing well, on the I've guitar. I've spoken to pre- the previous people uh-huh. in other episodes, and that was the other thing. I was like, when I was learning the guitar, I knew a couple of guys that were maybe two or three years older than us that, that had been playing the guitar, and they, yep. would, they would give us wee sort of hints and tips and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But see the concept of, or listen to it, and you can figure it out blew my mind because I'm like but how do you do, how can you just listen to that and figure <laughs> out now that's all I do now aye right but back then you didn't, you didn't have you didn't really have music videos no totally that, that showed what they were actually playing this is it music yeah. video was all about the aesthetic it was all it about was making the find, band look cool it was hard to find sheet music no totally you would, you would have your music shops and you, music they, they, city they would have they would have sheet music yep but it was just pure luck whether or not it was something that you actually wanted I remember excuse me and she certainly didn't have YouTube oh, where you learn how to play and you've got Aye. like a thousand videos of people telling you how to play a song no, totally I remember um, <laughs> I was in music remember Music City it was on the Coo Wine next to Furkins yes uh, no you, that was Music Warehouse Music oh. City that was oh um, see were sleeves that used across to from sleeves yes yes so I did my work experience there you go. there. Oh, <laughs> sleeves was excellent. But again, like even places like Sleeves, I mean the only place now that, that exists like Sleeves is Europa Music yeah. and Stirling and it's great when you go in there it's and you a, see Amazing them. that that's still on the go. I not again. And, and someone I seen someone just today they're looking for have you got records? Blah blah blah, you know, bring them in, cash. Aye. Cash and hands. Oh great. Right. But I remember Music City and uh, so I, remember, I used to go in there on a Saturday mm-hmm. and me and my pa would go in. Upstairs was always your music books. Yes, and, and the pianos. And the pianos. Yep. So I would go upstairs and I, I, I got into the Beatles. I absolutely loved the Beatles. In fact, it was when the Beatles anthology program came out in mm-hmm. the mid nineties. And again, my dad again. That means my dad's a massive influence on me in terms of music. But um, so I remember seeing the Beatles books, and I'll never forget it. The song was "I Should Have Known Better." Mm-hmm. I should have known yep. better. <coughs> and I wanted to learn to play the guitar solo. Now at that point. I wasn't clued up with music theory. I'm going to, that's my next guitar teacher that we'll, we'll talk about because yep. he, was, he was a massive influence on me. But, um, and I remember asking the guy, I, I remember reading the, the tablature and trying to memorise it. And I turned and said to the guy in Music City, I went, You got a pen and a bit of paper, mate? <laughs> and he went, <laughs> You didn't, you didn't what for? it, did you? What for? I went, I want to write in the guitar solo. He went, Ah, if he's not, that's copyright. Do Nowadays, you, know? you would have just got your phone out. Mate. Correct. No, I mean, <laughs> the difficulty of trying to learn a solo back in the mid nineties yeah. compared to nowadays is absolutely it's oh man, it's it's like a one eighty. Mm. It's completely it's so much easier to jump onto to YouTube or whatever. But um, as you say, learning by ear, that was That's something that just it's hard to explain to someone how to do that. Mm-hmm. But you do uh, you are able to do it if you yep. stick at it. So for me, a big learning point of that was uh, so after after Andy he moved away and left me. Yep. <laughs> uh, I went to a guy called Harry Sullivan. Really? Harry Sullivan was guitar teacher in Falkirk. Okay. The amount of stuff I learned from this guy, music theory that I learned from this guy. Now when I talk about music theory, I'm not talking about the dots because I knew how to read the dots. Mm-hmm. And I remember my first lesson with Harry, and I was like. I think I, I want to like, be able to sight read that. He went, Do you plan on playing on an orchestra? I went, No. He said, Well, I'm reading the dots. Aye. He went, I'm going to show you other stuff, more better music theory that's going to be more relatable. See, I would have been like that. Where's the tabs? <laughs> so, so, Harry started taking me through um, music theory. So, like, say, the modal system. That was one of the first things I kind of learned from a music point of view. So, learning like your major scale, but then learning that oh my god there's actually seven more keys built into this 
In fact, one of the things Harry used to get me to do, oh, I can still feel, I can still feel it in the fingers. So, for the kind of a, for the music connoisseurs out there, they'll know that like, for each key, yeah. there's five different shapes that you can play the f- major, the major scale in five different shapes. For each major chord, there's seven different modes and there's 12 different keys. So basically, it was like 12 times seven times five and they used to make me go up and down every single one of these and see if I got one wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I was nearly at the end. Yep, back to the start. Back to the start, there again. So you're blowing my mind because I know nothing. Right. Right, And, uh, and this is funny because I've got a friend who is a music teacher, does theory and all that. Yep. But it blows his mind that he's like, how can you write? How can you? How can you write a song when you don't know? And no, don't know the chord. second now, chord. There's, that time, there's times I have messaged you. Yep. And said, Barry, what's this chord? And oh, that's right. <laughs> right. Because, because I'm 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 trying to remember how to play a song that I've wrote. Uh huh. And I can't. I don't know what this chord is, yep. but I'm playing it. And it, it, so anything I'm doing is purely on feel. Not big. Ian, that's not, I'm, I'm jealous of that. Or, uh, again, me and my pal, uh, do you know Colin Murphy? Yes. Well, so, I know who he is. No, yeah, so me, me and Colin, we go away, we're best pals at school and I had different bands. I think he was maybe a, a year below us at school. All ah, right, okay. So, um, so Colin, me got him playing bands and what have you. And Colin, like yourself, didn't know music theory, didn't know why I know it. Why? Because he he always said that he would feel he would lose the feel and he's completely right because when Colin and I were sitting down to write a song in my head I've got modes going through my head I've got mm-hmm. major scales I've got triads going through my head I'm going okay you put a flat, a flat seventh in there you put a minor third in there blah. I'm just like I, try this try that see does that sound better than that mm. and then what I noticed with Colin Colin was putting two, go- two chords together in my head I'm like right what's the relationship mm. between those two chords they don't work together how is that sounding so good because I can even remember being all chuffed with myself, right? First band I was in, mm-hmm. say, I'm, say I'm 15, 16, we go into a, a recording studio, right? We're going to record a demo, it was a big deal back uh-huh. then, right? And uh, and uh, we'd recorded the basic track, so I'm in, right? We've got the lead guitar stuff to do, so I'm in. Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, one particular solo, oh, that, that's amazing, how did you do that? Well, I don't know what it is I'm doing. Just do that. He's like, you're jumping from say it was in a major you jump from major to minor back into major oh, but, right, but okay. it's working yep well I don't know it just sounds good it sounds so I, I'll tell you what I'll, I'll, was that a kind of a rocky song Aye. you're playing right so what's happening there I, I'm guessing <laughs> yep. is you're going from a, a, min, a, a major um, scale into a minor scale and you when you go some to a minor scale some of the shared notes exactly so you've got some of the shared notes yep. but it's that wee flat three it's got a flat three over a rock well it's a wee bend that I was doing and he's like wow he's like that's great I was like so, I just know that it sounds good sounds good but okay, you know something it goes back to that thing Ian see if it sounds good then it's fucking good again that was one of our teachers when I, it's embarrassing see when I think back to myself as a, as a teenager it's embarrassing because I was into the hard rock heavy metal that was what yep. that was what got me into the guitar yep and I spoke previously with Shawnee Sherman about this mhm Right, that I was vi- a lot of their stuff, a lot of the rock stuff is it's all riff based. Yep. The whole song, like we've got three riffs, that's what the whole song's based on. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like, like we, better, we better come up with some sort of lyrics because we've, we've got to sing something right. over the top of it. It's uh-huh. almost like an afterthought, mm-hmm. technically brilliant, mm-hmm. right? And then you flip to like Oasis, right? They're not technically brilliant, no. Nope. But they're all about melody. Yeah. Right. And I used to shun that back by right. I'm like, oh, I was like, I wouldn't dare be seen to try playing that because it's so easy. But again, and that, see, as I get older, I'm just like, you know what? You appreciate Some it. Some of the simplest songs are the best. Absolutely. It doesn't. You do not need to be breaking a sweat playing this this song. It's took me thirty years to discover that. <laughs> oh, that's but, it's took me thirty years. Thirty minutes. There's a time and place where it's absolutely brilliant. Exactly. Time but and place. it can also be so simple mm-hmm. and so brilliant. Johnny Cash, right? See people that there's a few people I've spoke to doing the gigs. Yep. And they're talking about oh I quite like to try and get into it. They're just learning the guitar. Uh-huh. I says mate, go and learn four or five Johnny Cash songs. It's you're talking three chords at the most. Yep. 
That's the whole song. That's it. The show done. Three you say track. the Elvis. Similar. Yep. Right. It's, it's Go early and look Elvis at any ship. Creedence song. They're all similar. Aye. But their melody is just. That's it, man. Bang it's, on. it's the melody that sells it. And um, I mean, something that used to really impress me still does to this day. I mean, people go on about ah, like Johnny Cash. Um, who, who was Johnny Cash? Guitar was it Luther? Uh, uh, oh, Luther Perkins. Luther Perkins. Yep. I'm sure his name is. I mean, he wasn't the most fancy lead guitar player, but I tell you one thing: see everything that that guy did on a Johnny Cash song, fucking excellent. Yeah. The sound, the tone. I did the need, as you say, time and a place. But it's, it's what? What is the song about? As in, is it? This is the this is guitars. Yeah. Is that what the song is about, or is it about? I know, it's just about the melody. Yeah, another thing, and again, it was Shawnee that was saying this, and and I had even cro- I'm in my forties now, and I had even crossed my mind. Right. right. I was talking to him because the Shermans have got back together because yep. they're going to do a gig in Bannockburn. I believe Scott and I are playing. I'm not going there. Well, we don't <laughs> know, that's it. Thank you. I believe because. Um, Again, yeah, I know we're going to um, get into Scotland. We're going to get into Scotland now. Obviously, Scott Ashworth. So because yeah, it his album getting right. released. So, but but we're talk- I was talking to him about that because I've got my tickets. Yep, going along. Brilliant. And uh, and I was talking to him about songwriting, and I didn't realise he had wrote all the songs. All for the Shermans. Yes, I oh, right. knew that. Yeah. But what he was saying was, and he wasn't disrespecting the other guys. Yeah. But he says the other guys. He said I was probably the best. Musician, as in, I'd done gigs before. Right, the other, okay. the other guys had experience. Hadn't played gigs, so he's more experienced. He'd done and he'd done songwriting and bits yep. and pieces. Showed it to the guys. Everybody would then contribute their part yep. to make the over, overall thing better, right? And I, I think he says they would be the first to tell you. None of them were like, I'm an expert on a, my instrument. He says, but it worked in our favour because he says it let the song breathe. Yeah. Because the lead guitarist wasn't shredding. Yep. For five minutes, first of all, he wasn't capable of doing it, but he didn't need to do it. Didn't need to. But it meant that see what he did play. Mm-hmm. It made you listen. It sounded interesting because it was different. And again, that's a really good point. And again, you might want to do this in part two. But um, like say with Liam's album that I did, Scott's album that I did. I mean, <coughs> there's stuff there that I did with Liam McGrandles, all right? Uh, for Liam's album, uh, the Please. Is this the originals? Uh, the original stuff. Right. The original stuff and some covers that he did. Yep. But I mean, there's stuff there. But me and Liam, Liam did that album uh, during COVID. There's stuff there, but I've wrote full guitar tracks. Mm-hmm. Liam loved it. Liam was like, oh, it sounds great. Yep. And I've listened back to it and I went, that song didn't read that. Why? It's melody driven. Well, this is what I was talking about because, uh, well, we'll talk about it later because I've got a wee bit that, that mm-hmm. kind of links into this, right? So, okay. see when you were, uh, so you grew up, your dad, your uncle. Yes. What song, uh, so your dad was Elvis, an Elvis man. Yes. Elvis and Beatles, that's where I got my right. dad. So, you kind of get influence, like my dad was The Doors, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, Creedence, The Who. Yes. Right? Yeah, he just, no, he loved everything else, but yeah. that's that, what that was, was the playing, core. Yeah, right? Okay. And then, 10 year old, uh huh. My pal comes down, puts a tape into my cassette player. Okay. And it's Metallica. Right. And I'm like, yeah. Dad, my dad's obviously never heard this, never played it before. So all of a sudden, light bulb goes off. I like that. You start to develop your own taste. Yep. What was it for? So you're influenced, you're hearing all the stuff that yep. your dad, and your uncle, and whoever else is listening to. You like it. You probably still like it. Is there, was there a, a moment like that for you? I think, I, I say, watching the Beatles anthology. And I, but again, it wasn't just the music, it was how these guys came about, how they got together and just watching that full story unravel. And Is that your favourite favorite band? I mean, oh, I Beatles, definitely. Yeah. So, there's three, it's funny enough, so obviously, as you know, I lecture at Full Fly College. Yep. And any time I've introduced, I've introduced myself to a new class, I've got a PowerPoint I always go through. I tell you that about me, uh, about my kind of background and that, and then I, that hopefully gets them to talk yep. about them and why they're there. So my three musical influences, Elvis, number one, mm-hmm. absolutely love Elvis. The Beatles, yep. love the Beatles. The third one, it's Eminem. <laughs> I know. Right. right, Eminem, when Eminem first came out in 1999, I remember hearing My Name Is on the radio, and this is nothing to do with guitar as well, which is probably, you're like, what? So I, I what, what was it that drew you to that then, since, since prior to that it was all band type music I love these um, these the actual words 
the warmth, I love the story. The sto- I thought the story was comedic, but then when you actually say listen to his flow, bear in mind, I wasn't a big rap fan before then. Well, see, I've got an idea later on. Okay. Uh, not today. Right. I'm going to ask you to come back. Okay. Right. Because I don't, th- I don't think you're a heavy metal man. No. Right. I'm certainly not a rap man. Okay. I'm wondering if we pick five songs each. <laughs> right. Okay. Can we convince other person to if like it? Right, okay. No, I'm well up for that. And it, like, so, auto, like, I, I'm just like, I know nothing at all about rap. Right, okay. Right. I hear, I've obviously heard it for years. Yeah. yeah. But it just doesn't interest me. There's just nothing that, that catches me. I'm just like, okay. it's just like, hear it, turn it off. Yeah. Not interested in the slightest. Yep. Yeah. There's loads of people with heavy metal. It's just noise. It's screaming. Turn it off. It's rubbish. But I. Being a heavy metal fan, I'm like, yes, there is stuff like that, but there's stuff that is outstandingly brilliant that I think you would like it if you got a chance. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you think the same about rap Absolutely, for me. Man. So maybe get us back in totally. and we'll pick ourselves like maybe <laughs> five or ten tracks each Absolutely. and see if we can convince other person. Absolutely, I'm well up for that one. Right? Well up so, for that. Uh, so your students, yeah, Elvis, so, Beatles, Eminem, and then Eminem. You cannot get so, any more different. No, totally. And then um, again, the thing about Eminem, I'd be surprised. I'm guessing. Oh, I every time I go Eminem, yeah. you get you get one half the class going, oh wow. And in fact, in <laughs> in the, oh, I'll tell you this story. I don't think I've told you this. So in brackets next to a picture of Eminem on my PowerPoint, I've got tattoo story. So they're <laughs> like. Okay. What's this? What tattoos do it's this? So I'm like, right. So a few years ago, my wife and I, me and Michelle, were yep. away on holiday. They were in Mallorca. I says, and as you do on holiday, as I'm doing tonight, <laughs> you enjoy a few refreshments. Right, okay. I says, next door to this place was a tattoo. Of course there was. Of course. <laughs> so I'm getting weird drinks. I says to Michelle, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a tattoo. She gave me a bit of girl power. I ain't go for it, man. That's the best for idea it. ever. Brilliant. <laughs> so... One of Eminem's most famous songs, early songs, is a song called Stan. It was a Christmas number one in 2000, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. There's a very famous lyric in that song. And he goes, I've even got a tattoo with your name across my chest. Yes, I got Slim Shady tattooed across my chest, right? <laughs> At now, what you might- point did you um, realise that maybe it wasn't a good idea? Well, I'll tell you. I'm still convinced to this day that I was this guy's fucking still his first customer. You should see the fucking <laughs> nick of it. No, I'll do it. I'll crop it and you can put it in as a thumbnail yeah. if you or a or a, a thing or picture on the side. It's just must do, man. It's <laughs> oh, it's all squiggly lines. You've never even got it lasered off. Nah, I went or covered up. I was in Vegas eh, last year and we went to a tattoo shop. I was like, you do anything with that? And the, the last she was like, she laughed, <laughs> but she was like, that's so great, but I would just leave it. I'm like, that's fine, there's no new fucking you know is it? You know what's funny about Eminem? I worked in a music shop uh-huh. part time when I was like 17, uh-huh. 18, something like that. It was 1999. So that's the one? No, 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 no. This, this was um, MVC. In the uh, mix of in shops in Howgate? Yes. Fucking hell, going by there, mate. Right. Hey! <laughs> right? And, uh, and I can admit, like, there would be th- like returns and bits and pieces, yep. and, and you'd have to put them back out in the shelves. Yep. Right, always looking busy, right? And uh, somebody had said, oh, so, there's a customer that's wanting the uh, M&M new album. They obviously sold all different bits. Yep. Where is it? Never heard of this person, <laughs> this band, whoever it is. <laughs> oh, it's in the rap section. I'm at, I'm at the M. M, M and M, M. M looking for the peanuts. I can't find it. <laughs> M and M. I can't find this person. <laughs> oh man. Oh brilliant. No, right. and say, I think that confuse a lot of people. You know what's funny? But what's, what's funny when you say when you're saying about Elvis, the Beatles, and then M and M, right? Everybody knows me as this big heavy metal rock guy, right? Yep. Love Metallica. I mean, love the heavy stuff like your Pantera and all that. Who's my favourite band? The Doors. I see. It's the, the can, you could not get further Bully. from it. Although some would argue he was the original rock star. Oh, I, I, oh, Jim Morris. I mean, the Doors. I absolutely love them. I mean, I think I'm sure you and I had a, a conversation. But I just finished Robbie Tickers. Yeah. Book. Yep. A uh, oh. What what I like about them, you find this more so with older bands, is their unique, right? Yeah. 
I, I can't remember. Say it's fifty years since he died. Yeah, that was right, seventy-one. Right. Name one band that has even came close to sounding like them. None of them. I can't think. But an entire career over four years. Yep. Right. Put their first album next to the last <laughs> album. It's, it's a different band. Completely different. Right. Aye. But it sounds as fresh now as, as it, it did back it. then. Totally. And you see, like my dad, massive Beatles fan. Yep. Sergeant Pepper. They just loved it, and he's like, "There's just nothing like that." Yep. You're talking like 50 years later. It's still great. Who's next by the Who? Right. Right. You've got Baba O'Reilly and all yep. these sorts of. There's nothing like that. Nah, totally, man. Been totally. You've no, got you're right. poor imitations, but but not even in the nowadays that you, or in the last thirty years that you've listened to that and went, you know what that that reminds me of the Who, no, or, I, like they're just such a unique sound. Not totally, and, I, and uh, I, I, it's a sh- I don't know I, what, why that my, doesn't happen anymore. My my take on it, yep, is. Studios back then obviously analog. Okay, you had your analog. So mm-hmm. every bit of studio equipment had has a particular color, a particular tone to it. And if you're a musician, so let's say you're a, you're a guitarist and you've mic'd up your amp and then you're putting that microphone into a particular compressor, but then you're driving that compressor a different way. Why? Because you've got that amplifier set up. It's a chain reaction basically. Yeah. So you can set up a different a different thing. Nowadays, and hey, I, I love I love my digital technology, mm-hmm. my Pro Tools, GarageBand, um, Reaper, yep. Ableton. <coughs> we've all got access to the same bit of equipment. We've all got access yeah. to the same digital converters, or, or more or less, you know the same what, digital converters. What? Another thing I hate, and and I now you've you've mixed a lot of songs yep. for me. Yep. I don't think we've ever discussed how I record it, mm-hmm. but when I've got. A, a guitar part mm-hmm. I record it start to finish I oh. don't I do not record copy and paste that riff <laughs> copy and paste <laughs> okay right? so see the bands back in the day yes they had to play the songs Straight start to, to finish yeah, most of the recordings were live in the studio yep. they come back do a couple overdubs fix a couple of mistakes they yep. maybe overdub the vocals or something like yep. that but the music was pretty much live yep right maybe it's this, maybe it's the type of music I play mm-hmm. I, I like to play a song start to finish so it might be that if you listen to the guitar on the first chorus mm-hmm. and then you listen to the guitar on the third chorus it'll be that wee bit different slightly different I mean I'm, I'm trying to play it the same yeah but again it's those wee, it's those wee individual bits that but I like it. to record start to finish yep and uh, there's a lot of bands now that don't do that right and it's a copy and paste job right so and I personally yeah. don't like that so for me I'm, it's not a copy and paste job with me, but I'm going to show you how I, the the way I, I or the way I certainly come up with guitar parts. Okay, and again we'll probably touch on this in review of part two. It's like Scott and Liam's album. Yep. So me and Scott used to call uh, Scott Ashworth. Yes. Call me the patchwork quilt. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. The reason being, he, he, that's not what you. What, no, what no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so Scott would record the song. Right, the bass, look for a bit of lead guitar. Yes. Great. So again, back to my theory head. Mm-hmm. Right, songs of key G, right, okay, there's a G major there, right, okay. And then I would listen to maybe, maybe say four bars. Mm-hmm. Right, bang, record. Oh, I like that, that's nice, right, I'll keep that in the next time. Record again, right, okay, let's keep that. And then now, take the best of. No, the, no, no, then let's move on to the next, next four bars. I keep building up the guitar. So see when I'm doing this gig with Scott in April. Yes. Mate, I was listening to his album coming through here, right? <laughs> what did I play? Uh, exactly. I yes. said this because even Scott is reminding me, God, I made you play bass in that song about. Did I? But see when Scott's recording. Yes. Is he recording is he, is he layering everything? So so it's As in, uh, Scott. because Scott Scotty is doing enough gigs that he can get off oh, his guitar Scott, and he can sing the song start to finish he knows Absolutely. his song inside, inside out inside out inside out man. but when he's recording is he doing a a basic track Scott, or so, is he layering it so I'm mm-hmm. not getting against that I, I layer all my stuff is layered right I start with something basic add something add something the I'm, only difference is I, when I'm adding stuff I'm adding it start to finish yeah. with the exception of the lead guitar that can get punched in yeah it. no totally so 
And Scotty, I don't think Scotty will mind me, me saying this at all. I'm just so using no, her no, as an no, example. No, 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 no. So, how Scott and, Lee, and Liam, the granddaughters as well, both their albums, so normally how I'll, I'll work is I'll get them set up, yeah. a couple of mics, and let's just do a demo first of the song you're, you're intending to record. Mm-hmm. 90% of both those guys' albums used the first well, demo. Liam's told me that. He's told me that before. The demos, and you know what, Ian? They're freaking brilliant. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a massive... Sometimes you can, it can be overkill. See if you're trying to get this... Totally. ...this perfection. You, you lose the moment when you've done it 20 times. And it, it comes down to that thing what you said, mate. <coughs> Scott and Liam, they know their songs inside fucking out. Aye. When Scott... I mean, seeing Scott play that, I, I'm listening going, there's nothing wrong with that. That, that. that there is a take. Yeah. You know what I mean, man? Absolutely. So mind you, mind you each song a couple of times to go get out of the mood and that. Yeah. But I mean, there were some songs there. I mean, it was take one for Scott and for Liam. Mm-hmm. Fucking unbelievable. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that there's bands now. Oh no, that the, 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 the will. They've never played the song start to finish. They'll and put in a drum part and then yeah. copy paste, copy paste. Me, that might be the way that they work, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But that, to me, is the difference between a lot of the bands now old compared school. to the old days. Partly the old days, well, you, you didn't have the ability to. Totally. You know, it wasn't into well, computers on that, well, but you then lose something as technology gets better absolutely depending on what artist that is because some of them don't some of them still try and record mm-hmm. like the old days yep. but there's a lot of them I would think when they go on stage to play it when they've started to rehearse maybe prior to the mm-hmm. gig that's the first thing they've ever played the song start to finish yep. apart from writing it Aye. so I mean one of the things with uh, what technology has done has is and I hate to use this word, but it has it has made it easier for a lot of people. You say you just need to play, right? Copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. Bang, mm-hmm. drum part sorted. Yep. Um, then you got a guitar riff. Do 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 do. Bang, copy paste, copy paste, copy. The other and thing, you start building up your song for there. You know what I mean? The other thing that you might have been, you're a few years younger than me. I'm um, thirty nine. Right, but uh, my first recording equipment other than a wee tape recorder right mm-hmm. first proper one task am four track right you had four tracks so if you were going to write a song you had to think about what you were writing because you only had four tracks yep you're now you could if you've got reaper or or anything oh, like that same. you could have unlimited tracks it's over 500 tracks now for pro tools but, for so it's pro. that thing where you're, you're, you've got so many options it almost yep. is a bad thing Totally. So I mean, like, so you mentioned that that was my first port of studio. It was a yep. Tascam Porta O2. Yes. I've still got it. I've still got it. You got two inputs. You got pan and you got trim, and that was your fucking whack. Yep. And that was it. You had to get creative. And I'll never forget it. I got a, I got a Casio keyboard off my cousin. Right. Okay. And the song I was recording it was a song Al- Albatross by Fleetwood Mac. It used to be a, a guitar uh, solo. Zero nine play. nine drums. It was, the, it was basically it had a kick snare and a hi-hat and an open hi-hat and I think a, some crash a symbol or something oh like. it was rotten but you had oh um, man they click track or fizzy line back I've still got the recording somewhere but I've done the same my I, f- very first recordings keyboard like like I would write the song in my head I'm like right this is kind of I want it I plug the keyboard in to get the drums <laughs> right I, and then I'd have like guitar I'd have a bass. Yep. And, oh, sorry, I usually had two guitars because I wasn't confident enough to sing. All right, okay, all right. So, to, to all my all my demos would have no no vocals. Right. Or that on them. <laughs> but that's how we all done it back Not then. Not totally. I mean, that's I, I try to explain that to, to students that I teach now. Like, so that four track machine, I would record three tracks, and then I would, no, sorry, I would record my four tracks, but then bounce. I would think that I bounce, bounce them back to one. Them back to then to allow one. you to have extra tracks. You know what I mean? Yep. But even my task I pull two was the cable they bounced, so I had to bounce it to a hi-fi. I done the same. I done the exact same thing. Yep. Bring the tape back in and then record it on the one track. It was a whole day. Oh, it was a nightmare. And you know what? You were so proud of yourself at the end of it. And then did you ever have? Did you ever have it? 
where you like you forgot to put the the mode into safe and you recorded the other part of your take. You'd been working all day and you were like, I mean, there was no command Z undo. Was there not something as well where you you had to ha- the tape on the task cam run at a different speed from your normal cassette tape? So you had possibly. To, I would imagine. I would imagine there'd be something, something like that. Like that but um, I it was a. But we'll talk more about the recording night. So aye. So. Well, when, uh, when did you kind of, you've got all your influences from your dad, your uncle, yep. other bits pieces, when and when did you, so was it high school when you started to get into your own kind right. of music, because you, right. you're a similar age to me, so again it would have been right bang in the 90s, in the UK especially, so, bands was, ma- like, playing in a band was massive. Was massive, the band so, sound was massive. I've got a really interesting story, and I guarantee you've not heard nothing like this right, from any other guests, alright? And again, back to my dad as well. So, as I'd been learning guitar, my dad, he had picked up a bit more of guitar and what have you. And my dad discovered that he had a voice. So, in 1995, my dad had put together a band called Stressed Out. Right. They were called, they were a really good pub band. They used to play up the Calendar Circuit all the time. Okay. I mean, Calendar back in the day. I mean, I dare say there's still good live bands up in Calendar. And were they looking for a young lead guitarist to, to win the women? When I was 11, <laughs> when I was 11 years old. Yep. And again, this back in the 90s, you could get away with playing the pubs at my, uh, uh, 11 year old, okay? Uh, he's 18, he's just short. And that's it, <laughs> aye. But even the owners were like, aye, be fine, we're bringing him. <clears throat> but my dad's uh, pub band, a band called Stress Dude, off the fire of the ass, the guys that were in it, a guy called Peter Marcus, who I actually got to play in a band with years later. Mm-hmm. Good drummer, big band drummer. But I can knew, knew right. his fox trucks, his fox trucks, waltzes, etc. My dad's lawyer, a guy called John Allen, who's a massive influence. What's on he on? Me. Bass. He was on bass, yep. but he's a guitar player. So it was a Paul McCartney scenario. All right. But you should have heard this guy on a guitar. But again, I'm going to get because John and the guy called Jimmy Ritchie, who was lead guitar two completely different styles and I was lucky enough to play in a band with them and see the amount of info I got for them was unbelievable yep. and I, you know, I will come back to that then my dad who was lead eh, sorry my dad who was rhythm guitar and Vocals. sang yep. and then and you then, yourself on lead and then I so the, so the other the other lead guitarist was just a second guitar player I think I mean now that I look back I think my dad was just wanting to give me more, more experience so here's a question for you yep do you remember your first ever gig yes as how did you feel? Where where was it? I'll tell you right now because <laughs> it's that belter. Right. So it was a place called the Waverley in Calendar. Okay. Since you went to Calendar, it's no longer there. It's now a house now, but it's on the right hand side. Um, I said I was like eleven years old, and um, now I'm not a football guy at all. But apparently Aberdeen was playing Rangers or, or something like that. Right. Okay. And so this 11 year old boy, my very first gig, so I'm playing all these songs. It's not made the same, but like. Was it covers? I was all, 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 all covers, all covers. I'm just a, a really good pub band. Mm-hmm. Um, and the there was a fight that broke out. <laughs> the okay. fight broke out. I, I ends up over the drum kit because somebody had nudged into me and that. But I goes back in the 90s. When I, my dad, he kind of got me back in and was like, keep the Just song going. Up. Aye, yeah. keep the song going. And of course, I'm sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? My dad, shut it, man. Just keep playing. All right. And I'm buying away with Man up, you wee dick. Aye, no, totally. <laughs> totally. And I tell you one again, it was the best fucking apprenticeship I ever had. See, playing that band. Yeah. Because as the young young'un, right, you go and you empty, you, you bring in all the gear. I'm logging in big speakers, right. and back then it was neat fucking compact stuff. No, no. You're talking fucking oh, still mind them heavy though. Big heavy speakers bringing yep. them in the bass bins and the drums, the, the guitar amps. But I bet you it was they also didn't want an eleven year old just standing hanging about. Possibly, possibly. But I tell you one thing, you'd see that education that right there because it went for bringing in the gear. Then I was watching how they were setting all this equipment right, okay. up. Then all oh, right, okay, that's it. See, so, see, by the time I was 13, I was setting up full band. I, yep. mean, I was mixing bands up. It was nothing to it. It was just right. second nature to me. So how long did you do that for? I did that for... I was still playing the stress down when I was about 16. Then the girls came on the scene. Oh, sorry, girl. Okay. <laughs> so, that was a concert. And that's when came my music for me took a wee bit of a lull. So I was still getting lessons for Harry Sullivan at that point. And it says Harry taught me yep. lots with theory for chord construction, for notes, from intervals, from arpeggios to classical stuff. I, I, I mean, it was it was very classically trained. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything was all very 
a, a not that had a purpose, but you I could I could I could read about music, or I could read like a chord progression, and I could tell you exactly how that works and why it works. Mm-hmm. Um, but could I write it? Could I fuck? Yep. And again, the, the reason why, because in here, I'm going to write G. Right, so what goes with G? That goes with G. And again, we'll go back to Colin Murphy. And that's where him and I work really well together. Because he would come up with these progressions and then I would figure out the links between them and go, let's go to that note and let's go to that So note. you would have went down well. Did, I must, did you take music as a subject at high school? In my exam results, <coughs> I was a foundy bomber. Yep. For all my He's subjects, music. Shouldn't number but one. You, you would have went down well in the music department. Absolutely. The reason being that not only did you you were you good at playing music, that you were capable of doing it, that you enjoyed it, but you also had the theory side, yep. right? Now you remember Linda Muir. Linda Muir. I'm, I, I was with Linda last year. Because uh, I went and I visited. I, I gave a, a master class to students. I, I think I aged her about ten years. That the. the the frustration that she had to right. teach me, right? Oh. So, <laughs> so she she start started at Denny High as a teacher when I think I was in starting fifth year. So it's higher think, music. So how old are you, Ian? You're I'm forty two, right? Because I mind Miss Muir starting, and because she took over the guy was the, the, Mr. Uh, Mr. Gil, Gil, no Gilmore. Gil, Gil, was an old guy. An old guy. Uh, but I tell you, what an eerie, what an eerie I can't had. remember. I, I never had him as a teacher, right? What an eerie had. I mind, I mind getting him a guitar but tune. I remember starting and, and my first first day with her in class, turned up, I turned up late. <laughs> and of, oh, and of, you don't do that! And of course, rather than walk in and say, yes, oh, I apologise. Apologise. What did I do? I just walked in, sat, sat down the desk. and started chatting to somebody, oh, right? Oh. She pulled me up. Who, who, who do you think you are? Blah, blah, blah. Right, but... We got on actually pretty well. It was one of the few teachers though, see looking back, yep. I have got this theory and, and I, I don't say it jokingly, right? Mm-hmm. But when my daughter was at high school, you go on to parents night yep. and all the teachers are make me feel old, right? Because they're all uh-huh. 20 years younger than me, right? They're all in their mid yep. to late 20s. Yep. And things like math, so like subjects that most people find pretty boring yep. and that, they were making it exciting. For the students, right? My daughter didn't like maths, but she liked going there, right? Uh-huh. Now, Linda was one of the few teachers, that, and now maybe she saw potential, like this guy, he likes playing the guitar, he's, yep. he's good at playing the guitar, right? But I've got this theory that the majority of the teachers that taught me, within 10 years of me leaving, I reckon they probably retired. Yep. I reckon a lot of them were holding on to retirement, and they were, it, by the time I was at school, they were at the stage where I can't be bothered, gave me my pay. Didn't bother me, yep. and just leave me alone. I know, right? and again, I, and she came in, and she was one of the few teachers that she was like, "No, there's potential there," but I drove her up the wall hi. because I had, I wanted, I, I love playing the guitar. I wanted to play the guitar. Yep. I had no interest in theory, right. right? And obviously, with music at school, half of it is playing, half of it's theory. Right. right. So all my, it was like a performing, a yep. a a a. Theory, C, 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 all that sort of stuff, and then it would level itself out somewhere in the middle, I'm, kind I'm, of thing. I'm a true believer in that. I think everybody, especially especially at high school, I think everybody's got that one teacher. Sometimes they're lucky too. I was lucky I had two, and I'll, I'll tell you because yeah. you, you know the other guy. I want to say, right? Um, I think everybody gets two teachers, one or two teachers at school that they've got that impact, and as you say, they maybe see something in you. One of them for me. Linda Muir, yep. um, as I say, I had the opportunity to sit down and I've got a funny wee story to tell you about Linda. I was in the staff room at Denny High uh, the day I was, I was doing that class. And uh, so we're just blown away and I was like, do you know, I said Linda, that one of my earliest memories of you is, remember you used to get the phone the phone books mm-hmm. to practice the drums on? I said, you got us up one at a time to play the drums. I said, me, me being the wee smart arse that I was <laughs> back then, I went, you basically kept it simple, just a straight four, one, two, and three, and four, and I went. C D C B. Me yeah. being the smart ass, one and I put a V a V eighth beat on, <laughs> on the one beat. Yeah. One and two and three. Like, ah, and then stop that. It's exactly kind of done. Taught me discipline because it was like that's the way I'm asking you play. I asked yeah. you to play that, and for then I was like I had a total different concept. I was like that's a fucking good point. You know what? You, you, 
I don't know if you remember, there used to be like a, a music festival at the school each year. That can't mind right? that. You get have everybody performing, right? Right. Ian, you've got, you've got to play in this. It, it's part of your hire. Oh, I don't like that. No, it's part of it. You've not got a choice. Are you, are you there, aye? All right, okay, well, I suppose I've got If it's part of my hire, I've got to do it. She told me afterwards. It was not on the day with your hire. I just thought you'd be really good. Really I'll end up winning <laughs> it. <laughs> You've jumped all wrong. I'll end up winning it, right? And you know what it was, though? Every person got up. Oh, it was the talent, the talent shows at the... Whatever it was called. Right, right, right. cool, right. And uh, it was that thing where uh, every person was doing... It'd be a song that the school had gave them. Yeah. Right? Some of them were crap at it, some were brilliant, some yep. were something in the middle, but then there would be like six people playing the same bit of music, it was the most boring night. I went out and done Stone Cold Crazy by Queen. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes! And I was the only, so there was, if there was like 40, 50 people performing, I was the only person that done anything different. Right. Right? And there was a teacher, a music teacher from another school that was friends with Linda. Oh, I don't right, know who okay. it was that was the judge. Right, she told okay. me afterwards that she was a Queen fan. All right, cool. Oh, brilliant, <laughs> right? But that can you show you, like... Oh, right. Like, she tricked me into doing that. Uh-huh. Because she's like, because I knew you were you good. You did that. I can't like, believe that. There's, there's loads of teachers just didn't... They're not interested. No, totally, man. I mean, so, as I said, the other teacher um, was Mr McCorkendale. Well, is that the one that had uh, he, he played guitar so much that his hair changed colour? Yes, that was the very one. Maybe, maybe it wasn't playing the guitar. Nah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss McCorkendale. And no, again, no, uh, for anybody watching this, <laughs> if you type in Barry Frame and Mr McCorkendale, <laughs> yes, the there is a YouTube video. Yes. Now, me, you were obviously getting all these lessons and nobody taught you how to tune a guitar, I'm assuming, I was, back then. <laughs> you know what it was? So that guitar that you see me playing, yeah. so the, the song was Al- Albatross, the one I tried to record. Right. The guitar that I was playing was my Uncle Craig, the, the guy that taught me mm-hmm. the front bell's guitar, and it had a Floyd Rose pickup on it. Right. I didn't know the fucking tuning things were doing there. <laughs> I'm a bit... That's no tuning up, man. I'm surprised I never snapped a fucking string. The, the, next, second, the next, the next, like a banana. The next, like that. The next one, Barry Howard. <laughs> fucking milk and tea. Bye. So, no, that's such The that's strings that. are about that away <laughs> from the neck. <laughs> My fingers are sore. What's going on? <laughs> Bye, with the Floyd, with the Floyd Rhodes uh, treble system. I don't know when you, you tuned in the nerve, yeah. eh? But, um, aye, so Mr. McCorkendale. I'll never forget it, he put, a, he put a, a bit of paper up outside his office for those that were at Denny High at mm-hmm. the bottom of the tip, excuse me, at the tower. And he was asking for musicians, so now bear me, I was a class, I, like, I, I, I had no uh, qualms in my I was a fucking bampot at the school, right? I was a total class clown. Um, one of them, you know what I mean? It was just, but as I said, music was all I wanted to do. And as he's, when I saw this, he put a notice up saying he's looking for a lead guitarist, he's looking for a drummer yep. to form what he... Like a school called, band kind of thing? An REM band, he called it, okay? So this must have been after I'd left, because I don't remember this any was, of this. was, what, 96, 97? Must have, no, I, must well, I, I left in 99, but I don't 99. remember any of that. But then I was just so uninterested in school that... Right, if I, I mean, I've spent a few, if you maybe on three periods or something, but, but uh-huh. anyway, so... We missed McCord deal, so it was an audition. <coughs> so of course I went in. To, is this to his classroom? This is his classroom. So right. I had his guitar, I had to borrow a fact we did London Muir. She gave me mind the Yamaha Pacifica making a electric guitar and I go up shows like a wee a, it was a wee Marshall, a wee Marshall. Do you remember there was, there was a guitar in the, there that was like a it looked like a bla, it was like a black, black. Yes, Paul? Yes. I sold that to them. Yeah. Is that was it, that was it called Le Satellite or guitar or something? I can't remember, okay. but I sold that to them. Yeah, that was mine. Bloody hell, man, I've played the hell it? That's mental. <laughs> and you know what? It actually sounded no too Great. bad. It's a humbucker, man. It was it's like a Les Paul copy. It was a humbucker, right. man. Aye, right. it was a Les Paul copy, and uh, Linda was looking. F- and I was like, listen, I've got another guitar. And uh, there you go. I just sold it to like Fair cash in hand. Fucking and this is where I was still a student. Nice. <laughs> I'm going to carry out that weekend. No. So, uh, aye, so Miss McCordy was in an audition, so of course I was like, look, he's the song, and, and again, Miss McCordell, he wasn't that clued up on theory, but again, absolutely gem my guy. I love the guy, but it's unfortunately he's passed away. I know. Um, but it was about 10 years ago now. Um, but the minute I started playing a bit of lead, I could still, I could still see his face light up yet. I'm like, wow, brilliant. And from then, I just had this great relationship um, with him. In fact, <laughs> so one night, uh, 
It might sound wrong now, but uh, really, uh, back in the 90s, it was a different time, mate, right? right? So there's a place in Dunfermline, I don't know if you remember it, a place called Sinkies right. in Dunfermline. It was a base there, it was a great jam. I had a Wednesday night <coughs> jam, it was fucking brilliant. Like an open mic type open thing? Open mic. Mm-hmm. You put it this way, it was a drummer for I'm sure it was a gun. Right, you okay. have the kit and that there, uh-huh. so I mean, it was uh, unbelievable. Mr. Cormdale, one night, we've been having the third year of the high school. <laughs> It was me and my pal, the, who was it? Was it Kenny? Maybe it was a guy called Kenny Humphreys, I can't remember. I'm sure it was us too. But anyway, so he he done the drums, I done the guitar. And he was like, right, we've got to go to this jam night. So I <laughs> did the lay by, I remember the chipping that used to be. Yes. So he picked us up from there right. after I was at school. I mean, it yep. does sort of a dodgy now, but honestly, it really was there. But he just had an interest I, in music and encouraging absolutely. students so who showed took, potential. Went, took us up there, and he mm. just, just was sitting at the table. So come in and bed, right, you, you want a wee pint? <laughs> so <it's> like, yes. <laughs> Aye. So, uh, next time the bar staff clocked us, we were like, right, we need ID for the guys. And he was like, alright, well, they just won't drink. No, we need ID for them, maybe. Uh, we've not got a kid license. It was like, shit. And uh, <coughs> aye, we, we had to leave right away. Our minds have been so gutted. Well, see, uh, I don't know if you work with them now, but Peter Flett, that... I was, yeah, I was, I was talking to Peter Day for enough, aye. So yep. we, we played, he, he was a drummer when I, when I was a teenager, we yep. played in a band. And I can remember... What, what was it? Was that a, a, what was the name of the band? Defect. Defect. Actually. Um, let's have a wee licky. Oh, hey! There's one there, there's one there. All oh, access TV. There's one King Tots. Yeah, so. The King Tots? Yeah. Nice right. man. But I, this was like, this was maybe about 97. Right, okay. 98. And I can remember, so he was the youngest in the band. Right. Playing it nice and sleazy through Scotty Hall Street right. in Glasgow. Yep. And having to, to him to climb in the window at the back <laughs> because he wasn't he couldn't get through the, the entrance because he was seventeen and the rest of us were I think eighteen and the singer was nineteen or right. something like that. Right. So he had we had to pull him in the window at the back. Right. Brilliant. Uh, because he couldn't get in. So what happened was it was a typical you you, you do the sound check during the day. Yep. No, there's no door guy there Correct at that time. point. So you go in, set the drums up, set the amps up, sound check, and then you've got four or five hours to kill. Yep. And then obviously when you come back, all of a sudden there's a door guy. No, you can't get in, mate. You're only 17. <laughs> <laughs> through the window. So I had to pull him through the window at the back of nice and to do, for the downstairs bit. <laughs> Um, because he was parked in the back to, just to do a gig and See, then he had to climb back out. I should have done that with Mr. Cordial, Mr. Cordial for <laughs> putting me my path through the, the bathroom window and sink his. <laughs> well, there you go. But I, as I say, that say I know great times like that. It really is. It was such a really good time. It's, it's just, it's, um, well, I didn't feel you got much of that when I was at school, Encur- actual encouragement. Yep. And um, hopefully it's maybe changed nowadays. I would but th- it's. It's maybe changed nowadays, but then on the flip side, you've got nobody that wants to start a band. Correct, correct. So you're like, what the hell's happening here? Aye. And it I'm couldn't it be easier nowadays as, as like, that. see if we had the technology that we've got nowadays, when I was like, a teenager, yep. you wouldn't have seen me. No, totally. I would have just spent the whole time like, I, again, being a complete nerd in my room. I mean, me and they, I was all my colleagues and guys like yourself, we've been talking about this quite a lot. I put it down to appreciation. It's appreciation. Of as you, as you say, yeah. bouncing, having a full day, bouncing mixes in real time. We've got offline bouncing now. You can, you can put a three-minute song out within ten seconds, if five, five seconds. You know what I mean? You can yeah. put that to a disc. And what's your thoughts, right? Again, I've spoke pre- to the to previous people on episodes about this. I feel like I'm of a generation where artwork is just as important, or mm-hmm. not as important, but it, it's important. Oh, it, to the music absolutely man whereas nowadays it, why do you even need artwork you just download it you just stream it you know but I'm like open that up oh, no, I, like, I can remember buying albums based on what the album cover looked like I, I, you didn't have YouTube to go on and see this, all like, this album cover looks cool I'm mm-hmm. buying it yep hit or a miss not I mean, I mean you know, you're thinking some of the iconic I mean Sacks of Peppers I mean that's an iconic album yeah. cover right there but I mean, it wasn't just even about the, the image in the, in the front. 
it was there was something tangible but the there. The story behind getting some of these album covers Not as well. Totally. I see the one like Morrison Hotel, yep. right? The Doors album, and, the, and, and the, the four band members are sat in Morrison Hotel, which is is somewhere in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And then you hear the story behind it. Oh no, they wouldn't let us take a picture, so they waited till the door guy went away and we, <laughs> the photographer <laughs> cut it on in and they just sat, yeah, looking cool. Aye. And then it's like, right, we've got the picture. That's the most, it. One of the most iconic album covers no, of the absolutely. 60s ever. One, absolutely. But again, even, even <coughs> as well as the album cover, but I always wanted to see right, who produced this, well, who mixed this. Lyrics, lyrics. I'm, I'm reading all these lyrics. And yeah. that was the other thing, is, is I felt like you knew albums and songs better because you didn't have this unlimited supply like like right, I'm going to listen to that 30 seconds later I'm bored next song next song so no, you only had these 12 songs because yep. th- th- I've just bought this album so yep. I am no- what I want to know everything about this album yep. Start and that's why finish. albums were important because no no you know the album artwork's important the, the track order oh, is important you've, you've got to start with a belter yep. you, you've got if you've got one that's not weaker, but maybe something a wee bit more low key, right? You would put that maybe about fourth or fifth. Yeah. You want to end on a belt, or you want to get your, you know, the second song's got to be this. Aye. Like that was important. Absolutely. And now that's been lost and nowadays I, because I, yep. it's, it's not albums, it's not artwork, it's it's, it's streaming. streaming. It's streaming, man. It's streaming. But it's nice that you've got access to <laughs> unlimited music. See, this is the thing, eh? So again, this is a, a, when I was at uni, I did a lot of reading on what they call Music 2.0. Music right. 2.0 was obviously a streaming platforms coming in. Yep. And they reckon one of the worst things that you could ever do was have that shuffle button because as you say, you're messing up that order which people have spent a lot of time yes. considering they went, right, let's have that track one, let's have that track two. You hit the I shuffle mean, like, button. We'll, u- we'll use Scott Ashworth as an example. Just yep. since I spoke to Scott recently about right. his album, his album's coming out, you've recorded it, right? Now, I don't know, is it 12 songs? Something like that? It's 11 songs on the right. track, but recorded in 15 or Scott's, something. I'll guarantee Scott's not just went, what order do you want them? It doesn't matter, just, just no, chop totally. them, just chop them. No, no, it's Scott, Scott has spent time thinking, right, I've got these 11 songs, I want this one, and then I want the next one because it leads in better from that yep. one, and then I want this, and then I want that, right? And then I know that I've I seen on Facebook that he's put up, that he's he's got his... Art, what, CD. Yeah, I've got CDs. Yep. Right, so you'll be able to download it. You'll be able to stream it. But you can, if you want a hard copy, you've the got hard it. Copy, right? Right? No, he's not just, you know, took a picture of the wall. Right, he, he's like, I want not. this picture, and then the inside picture, I want it to look like this, and then there's the back totally picture, right. and you know, that's important. Well, in my and opinion, it's important. But you ask somebody who's 16 year old, not totally man. Uh, it's uh, no, uh, it's probably something that's not even crossed their mind totally. because. That's lost now. Nah, to me, that, that that is totally lost art. I mean, so I remember the day we finished mastering his album, and then it came to the track order. Yep. We we're like, right, what track order do you want to go? And as you say, he had all his head what he wanted, and we sat, placed everything where it should be, and we listened to it start to finish, and mm-hmm. we were like, that, that I know. I was like, personally, I think that's him. Obviously, final word mm-hmm. to Scotty, obviously, and then. So just last week, last week when he phoned me, he just got his album, he got the album yes. delivered. He's like, bring it So he, so he comes around and have it. He went, I went, so did you listen to it? It's alright? He went, I've not got a fucking CD. <laughs> 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 so we ended up, and I went, oh, I tried to open my DVD player and I went, that DVD player's no longer That's plugged in. Didn't. I, I said, that DVD was no longer plugged in. And I was like, oh, I can't be asked going to be up to the studio. I went, get him We'll jump in my car, go for a wee drive. Didn't even bother, just never left my driveway. We just sat in, my dr- in, the, in the driveway, listened to I that. Sometimes it's like amazing in my car as well. Well, because my next point in my car, the sound system's fucking horrendous, man. It's, see the high mids? Mm-hmm. They're, they're cut right yep. through. It's, I, it's a. I'm looking forward to because uh, I'm on this channel, obviously sitting, chatting to people. Mm-hmm. But I, I do what I do, like reviews and bits and pieces Aye. so I'm going to actually I've not said oh, it yet but I'm probably going to it maybe be a good album to start with absolutely since uh, we spoke about it only a couple no, totally episodes man. ago it's I'll give uh, Scott a shout but it's, uh, um, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it I really did so enjoy working just before we, we shift on right mm-hmm. you've done all this stuff about the guitar guitar playing something that always get, gets overlooked what about vocals how, how did you get into singing did you get lessons 
I never oh. have, I don't sing mate. No? I'd, I'd, I'd do, you just do, it, do you do a bit of back singing? I'll do a bit of back singing. Um, there'll be some songs that I can sing in the band, but even like say, so the band I play in the room, the Dirty Martinis. Yes. Um, so like the songs I sing, like so, uh, Part Life, Blur. Yep. And why? Because I can do the Cockney accent. Um, yeah. I do but that, I've, right? I've seen you doing singing, you, you, no, do, I, you do, um, you'll... Every now and again, there'll be a wee, a wee video, video that pops up here on social media, so, uh, and it's you maybe playing all the instruments, and you done one Johnny of Cash, Eminem, Eminem, done Johnny Cash. But Cash. is that just a wee bit of fun? That's a wee bit of fun for me, man. That's just more just backing vocals. But I'm playing; it's more backing vocals, and maybe I might do two or three songs. So I'm sort of doing like that. But the, it's something that's you know, a style that you're maybe more comfortable with rather than I, just jo- being I, the main I singer. I wish I wish I could sing. Yeah. I wish I could be a lead singer because. Don't worry, I mean, there is times where, like, if you're a lead singer, if it, you, know, you can't even say it's not worse if he's got a sailor tour, if I've done three gigs, three yep. gigs in a row, there might be weddings or four hour gigs. You might need a wee bit of help. It's, I mean, that's a long time it's to sing, it's, sing. it's a lot of singing. Yep. And I've sort of gone, Baz, can you do a song? So, like, say, the old school stuff will come up to my head, like, Johnny, be good. Yes. Get away with that. A wee Elvis number, I'll get away with that. Teenage Dirtbag, that's one that I sing. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, is I that really the, the high bit in the middle? <laughs> no, I've got kids, me and the drummer, they do that and it's, right. pr- it's pretty cool. Um, but even like, so see when it gets to the chorus, the teenage mm. bag, kind of hit it, Graham, the singer, he has to come in. Well see when we done the Christmas single, I don't know if you remember right, but y- you wanted everyone to record songs start to finish. Yes. And then you picked, right, I'm going to do that line for that person, that line. Yep. And I don't know if you remember, but I sent you the stuff over, it says, I've missed out the chorus because it's a kind of it's in the it's wrong too key. High. But because I was I was just starting to sing then, uh-huh. I wonder now if I was to go back and if I would have the confidence. Mate, to do I would it. I would dare say that you, but, you, you um, would have. But I when I sent you these files, it was just verses uh-huh. with no chorus. And I don't even think even the bit at the end when it's like the full crowd sort of singing right. in the outro. Uh-huh. I don't think I was on that. Mate, I wouldn't go back to the session. I, I don't see, think so. See, but I know see. that I did the verses, but I definitely missed out the chorus because I was like, this isn't the wrong key for me. But oh. part of that was maybe, maybe I was not 100% confident in myself. But I said, man, no, I mean, I, I loved your bits. And as I say, it was, uh, I mean, that full, I, I just loved that full project. It was great. Yeah. It was, uh, it brought a lot of people in that together. But we're going to talk about that in part two, right? Sorry, man, sorry. So, right. You're playing in your dad, your dad's band. Playing my dad's band, right? And right. When does that kind of end for you? What so that ended. Roughly? So when whilst I was playing my dad's band, I was also playing the bands at Denny High School. So that's been me. Is this just up, like pals and stuff? Like, right. And you're like, so, let's start a band. Like. Yep. So it was me and a guy here, Colin Murphy, um, and Willie Gillespie, who was on drums. Great drummer. Doesn't play anywhere. It's a shame. I, t- I see Willie quite a lot in, yep. in the booze on that. Um, so we are the band called X90. But are you doing covers, writing your own songs, or is that a bit of both? Both. A bit of so both. So who's writing the songs? Oh, it's Colin, man. It's oh, Colin. Colin. Colin wrote the songs. He so was... is he writing them as in, right guys, I've came up with a, 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 a rough kind of verse, would... chorus, bridge? Melody, melody and rhythm. Right. But would he come in and see, right, what can you add to it to make it I better? I would add my lead guitar. Well, I would almost add his. his I drums. want this kind of beat, and yeah. then the guy would go and he'd be like, right, that's. Fine. I, I mean, it do would, that. It, it do would more be, of that. Or not, of that. Would, no, I, would, I no. wouldn't even. No, I'm busy with that. It was, it was all, all about your contribution. So here's that. And come like, oh, I really like so that. Do you write songs? Yes, you do. Yes. How do you write a song? Right. Okay. I've I've said this again in previous ones, right? Uh huh. So. There's no right or wrong way to mm-hmm. write a song, right? But see the amount of times I'm in a car, yep. in my car driving, got the music on, and there's one little line mm-hmm. or one tiny wee melody thing that comes up from a song and it just sticks in my head, right? Yep. I can write a whole song based on that and the whole song's inspired by this one wee line from another song. Yep. The song I write's got nothing to do with the song. It doesn't sound anything like the song, yep. but it's just something that's clicks in my head. Do you want to hear how I write a song? Go for it. Starts off with the guitar. Always with the guitar. Well, that was the other thing I was going to say. Are you guitar are you the, the guitar first, vocals last? Vocals struggle. Uh, sorry, not vocals like song like lyrics. Struggles. Lyrics like, last. Lyrics <laughs> lyrics really struggle song. Or are you more right. just the song? So basically I've got a 
in my my phone. I've got album songs. These are songs I want to eventually turn in to feel right. To feel and album. this is just all ideas. This is ideas, but most of them are now completed. Mm -hmm. and it's just about getting them produced. So, for example, right, pop punk idea. <laughs> right. right. Okay. A bit of blunt, blunt one eight two thing. We are very similar because I have got similar to videos. I've got my phone, yep. and it's and it's it'll be me, and it'll be a blank. The, the, the phone sat on yep. the desk, yep. or it'll be me, and you can see the steering wheel of the car because I'm holding Aye. my phone because I'm I've came up with a melody and I'm like that. I need to remember yep. this, and I'm I'm humming it into the phone. Yep. Or that. No. Sometimes they turn in the songs. Yep. Sometimes they don't. Just be Strangely, a Strangely, it doesn't happen too often, but occasionally I'll write a full song, three verses, chorus, lyrics. Very rarely do they actually become a song though, because oh, right, okay. I always write the music first. Right. And I've got a vocal melody in my head, which I then put words to later on. Right. For some reason, occasionally though, I'll get it'll go the other way around. Uh -huh. But very rarely. Does it actually then turn into nah, a right. song? So I mean, like an example. So like that idea there, I came up with that back. It was August. Came me really quickly, and I mean, not to bore you with this, but hang on, hang on, I'm just gonna find it. <laughs> hey, so right, what we got? What we got? This was basically that, that was on the way to a gig. Yes. Pulled over. Well, I'm, I'm well, what were you doing? That, that popped into your head. Can't sing him. Can't were you just listening to something or maybe something like so, that? The thing about me, see when I'm going to a gig, yep. going to and from a gig, I say four hour, long set, audio books, that's all I listen to, totally don't listen to music. Yeah, because you're sick and tired of it. No, it's not so much that, no, I would not agree that I, so sorry, I want to try and find this here so I don't. This better impressed. Uh, no, no, totally, <laughs> no, totally. <laughs> Hopefully, just get a wee cut of sings. But I'll tell you the story behind it. Yes. So, as I said, I just had this pop punk idea going through my head. And then the night after the gig, it was still in my head. Mm. So, I got a couple of my favourite beverages. Yep. Right. Sponsored by Henry Wessons. <laughs> and they hey, sat up in my studio. Yep. And I put down my guitar lick and I came up with this. This is a demo. This sounds like something. Don't tell me that. No, no, it reminds me of, of something. I want to put it as a, as a, a quite a few fighters, a Blink 182 ish. Right, hold on, this is annoying me. Keep it going. And again, of course, that's me singing. There was straight four there, but then you hear timing differences coming in. Okay, double time. You know what it reminds me of? Ash. Alright, cool. Like that kind of. Uh -huh. Teenage pop. Die. Thanks. No, totally. And again. I mean, so see when you're, see like, you're, 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 like, you've got like, I don't know, let's say there's ten songs in there. Aye. Do you tend to write the same style? No. Or, or could it be? Oh, absolutely. Oh, this is a Johnny Cash type song, or oh, this is like a Foo Fighters type song, this is something else. I could give can, you... Can you jump between I could, all different yeah, I ones? could give you ten different genres in that list there. Yeah. I mean, the one, the one I'm working on, I don't like, no, in fact, I would just say Beckett. Eh... Uh, you know the song Pure Imagination with mm -hmm. Willy Wonka mm -hmm. in a world of pure yeah, yeah. I've done a hip hop version of that alright okay fucking hear it mate it's fucking brilliant if I yeah. do say so myself I think the beat works really well with the, the style I'll send it I'll send it over you later to get a wee listen right yeah, I don't know if I've got it there so here's a question for you right so we've yes. kind of talked about getting in the bands and songwriting and all that what in your opinion makes a band work <laughs> hey go to be the members man Go with the members, I've always treated as So this is kind of going back to what I'd said previously when I was speaking to Shawnee yep. about the Shermans. Yep. 
So, I mean, it's got to be, first of all, if you've got three or four people, five people, they've got to get on. Absolutely. I've always said that you, a band is like a family. You either love each other or well, hate you, each other. You hear profe- one. professional ones, they say it's, a, it's, it's like a marriage. Aye. And, that, and that's why so many of them end up splitting up. Yep. Because um, for whatever reason they get fed up with this well, person or that you know, person. Do you know one of the main reasons, <coughs> yeah, according to my research when I was doing my, my degree, yeah. um, one of the main reasons the band split up comes down to Moolah. So it comes down to the artist or the songwriter not splitting royalties. So like, you think a band like Coldplay, Chris Martin, he writes the songs, mm-hmm. but he splits the, the royalties equally between all the band members. So we we'll see the doors. The doors are the same. The doors. Every song written by The Doors. Yeah. Didn't matter who yep. came in with the idea, who done this or that. And did you ever notice after Jim Morrison died, he's noticed that's when they started going to court? Yeah. Did you hear about that in, yeah. the, in, the, in the book? But I mean, like a band like U2. U2 is another great so, example. So, U2 are one of the... I can't think of another band that's got the original members that's been going that long. Again, I finished, again, Bono's book. Give it a listen. Mm-hmm. It can get me political, but... Yep. Good. But, what is... Are they, are they all school friends? Is yeah. that how they met? Yes, so um, from a very young age, that's how, that's how they come up Because you wonder, like, the amount, amount of bands that I listen to, there's very, very few of them have got the original members. Oh, they've, totally. they've got six or seven albums, it'll not be the same Aye, totally. members. Occasionally it's maybe a death or something, and you go, you mm. know, okay, I'll let you away about that. Aye, that's <laughs> right. but, I consider it fuckers. Yeah, but... <laughs> I was like, what? What makes like like we 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 play the pubs, yep. right? Now you obviously you're in a wedding band. That's the next step up, or it's something slightly different yep. from your your pub gigs. But playing in duos, playing in bands, what makes it work? What doesn't make it work? So one of the best things that that I've always said is you need to get along with the members. So one of the first big wedding bands I played that it wasn't even intended to be a wedding band it was a yep. band called Grand Central. Mm-hmm. Grand Central formed in 2009. Now, my whole idea with the Grand Central was I wanted to play just 90s, just that. What I wanted Ocean that's Colour what focused on. Oh, uh, that's all I wanted yep. to do. So, we started going to the pubs, but then you started getting people asking for to do some Beatles. Of course, we can. I know because we want you the Beatles. Of course. All right. But anyway, the the band members that I, that I've played with, I mean, uh, Stevie, Stevie Smith, the drummer, fucking incredible drummer. Kev Warsdale, bass player, incredible. Again, I played in a band previous with them. Um, again, that's a story from our time. Okay. Um, that was I. So, and uh, David Reed. Love those guys, still do. Love those Is guys David the one you used to play still with? I still play with David. You know, son, David, give my love to David. I mean, me and David could not see each other for about a year. Yeah. Two years. And then when we see each other, it's like... You just take off where ex- you left Exactly. Off. Funny enough, during COVID, so do you remember I done the, the Live on the Drive mm-hmm. gig? Yep. That was the first time David and I had played. Because we had rehearsal for that gig. It was fuck all. It was... Uh, right, that was out of raising money. That was something. raising money for Strathcarn yes. Hospice. So that was a follow-on from the Christmas charity single. Right, okay. And so David and I done Live on the Drive. Um, and, I mean, that was the first time him and I had played with each other for... for Five years, five, six, and mm-hmm. they, they practice better. It was just, right, let's go with that set, let's yep. go for it, great. But to answer your question, you need all your band members, and again, and you need to have an understanding of ego, because let's face it, man, musicians, but well, we've all got egos, man. I, all got I, egos. I spoke to specifically to Shawnee about this, Joe, if you were to go back and, and listen to it. Yep. And uh, he was saying, the, the 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 guys that he was playing with, none of them were, were technically gifted musicians. Yep. But what that allowed was the song to breathe. Yep. Because you didn't have the, the lead guitarist wanting to shred for five minutes. You yep. didn't want the drummer doing a drum solo yep. or, or that. So you've obviously got to have. If you've got four or five yeah, guys, they, they need they need to be getting on together. Yep. But. And I see it, I still see it in pubs. I mean, it's got obviously a duo or anything that's two or more people. Is It's the ego thing. See, see people wanting the spotlight. I've always... And, and it, it destroys it because... Totally. It's, I'm not, not blowing my own trumpet, but see people 
especially mus- other musicians, when me and Liam were playing, and they would come up to me and they'd go, oh, you know, I really like the, the sound that you create. Uh huh. Liam is singing and playing, mm-hmm. right? I'm taking my lead from him. Yep. Right? It's not this fight of, I'm, I'm trying to get my part done, yep. he's trying to get his part, right? He is leading the song. Yep. I am contributing and hopefully what I'm playing mm-hmm. is making the overall sound better. Yep. Right? But it's like, you know, there'll, there'll be wee bits where it's like, this is a guitar solo, right? This is my wee bit to shine. Yep. Right? Absolutely. Going back, right? That, we don't need lead guitar here. You need a wee counter melody that, that just is something that's subtle that, maybe, that. that goes in between his lyrics. Yep. Or you need something, you don't need a lead guitar part there, but I'll do something rhythm wise but I'm going to do it different from what he's doing yep. to make it sound better I'm not I'm going to I'll pick the chords instead of there's no point two of us strumming the same chords you've got you've got to realise what does this song need to make it sound better but right. people don't sometimes you've got four or five people clashing because they're all just like I want the spotlight I want the spotlight yep and I was like it's so not going to work again it goes back to my point um, Ian again you're going to cover this in part two but like I said there's songs there that leave me grandos I've got I've, I've written full guitar parts for them and they're not mm. in the album why? because I took them out because I was like it doesn't need that having that mindset of what does this song need and that's to me that's one of the biggest so for, differences as, as a musician you should be able to listen to that song and go what does this song need what's well, going to be good for this before song before Liam went to get started doing his recording properly me and him used to mess about and, yep. uh, and we had done some recording and stuff and, uh, and this time it was like right well you do the lead guitar, so you you add whatever you want. But there were songs where I'm like, doesn't it need a lead guitar? Yeah. It sounds perfect the way it is, just with the rhythm yep. and vocals. Yep. But there's some people can separate that. They, they, need, yep. they need to be heard. Yep. And that's, that's kind of the downfall. I, and again, it's like the same with the band. I mean, I know. See when, see when a couple book their wedding, their wedding band. Yep. I know ninety percent of those brides and, and grooms, they're listening to the singer. Grooms a shit hot singer, he's brilliant the way he does. And whether you like it or not, if you're in a duo or a band, the singer is the main person. That's it, man. That's it. The singer is so, the main person. The singer might not want to be the main person. No, that's but not the it. singer is the main person because they are driving the song yep. and everybody else absolutely. is sort of taking the lead from them. Yeah, absolutely. Again, so the bands that I worked in, whether we call them Murphy, whether we were David Reed eh, or, or, or Graham for the Dirty Martinis, um, we have every single one of them have had a great relationship on stage relationship with them. Yep. And that I can look at them and we know exactly what we can we're read thinking. each other. We can read each other like a fucking book and yep. me that so you're you're mentioning about what's important in the band. Family, well, that takes harmony, time as well. Totally, and I tell you what, Ken, the quickest person that ever go that way was David Reed. Yeah. Our very first practice, mm-hmm. we just knew what each other was thinking. And in this day, I love the guy bits, and I tell you one thing, I absolutely enjoy. I, I, there's nothing better. It's just than easy a playing a gig wheel. Ken, sir, I wouldn't even use the word easy. It's enjoyable. That's yeah. what it is because I mean, hey, I love my wedding band to bits, and I'm I'm so appreciative that I can be in something mm-hmm. like that. But I tell you one, weddings can take your toll. They take the toll as well. I mean, we'll probably go into it more in yep. part two yep. about the band band. But what is the main difference? Do you think between playing in, in a wedding band <laughs> and playing in either a pub band or a pub duo or something like that? Now, obviously, we understand wedding band. You've got to be more professional. You're yep. dressed better. Yep. Yep. You've yep. maybe got you know certain songs that you have to play because they've been maybe requested. I don't know how it works, right? But what would you say I mean there is a, a level of professionalism yeah. that is more for a wedding band but what do you see having done both what is the main difference I could say it like but there's a, there's a part of me like that I want to say it what, 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 main, main difference what I'm meaning though is no no I, don't, I, I know what you're saying, see, I know the, what you're saying. see the musicians playing in a, in a pub band yep a lot of them will be just as good as the musicians play, Absolutely. playing in a wedding band Ian Absolutely. See the ones playing in the pub band? Yep. They'll be playing a lot of songs that you're playing at a wedding. Absolutely. So what what, what do you see being the difference having done both? Money? 
Money, mate. Unfortunately. Yep. And, and again, and I hate you'll get people watch this who are creative driven and I get that. Well, I, I, I need to say it because every wedding yeah, band... It's a job. Do. Absolutely, mate. And again, that's right. So let, if we focus on that, so it's a job, right? So it's a job that it tells you to be more professional. But I tell you one thing, nothing beats playing a fucking pub in a band or in a duo. It just is fucking brilliant. The difference, I suppose, the other main one being at a wedding, people mm-hmm. are there to see you play, they're happy, yep. you want to have a good time. Absolutely. You're not guaranteed that going to a pub. Not totally. You, totally. can, you can go to a pub and have 30 people and they're not interested. I could have somebody come up to me at a pub and go, um, excuse me, any chance you can play early women by the doors? Yep. I could talk to David. David, do you get that song? No, I didn't get it. I was like, no. Right, feck it. I'll get it a go. I'll get it a go, mate, before you get an idea. And we'll get yeah. a laugh with it Aye. at a wedding. Oh, oh, no. Of course, no. Danger. So I'll say that that's one of the big differences right there. But I'll tell you what I mean. Mate, I've been playing the same, you, you, the you can, same you can, songs. You can, uh, do you have a set? Absolutely. Like, like a set list? Like yep. Set yeah. as in, do you do the same one at each wedding? Bar a, maybe a, couple, a different Abs- opening yep. song or something Absolutely. Like and you know what? It's... Whereas if you're playing, see if you're playing in a pub. Oh, you can change Instead of having week. these 40 songs are great for a wedding. Yep. No, no. If you're in a pub, you might have to learn two hundred songs. Yeah. You I might mean, you might play ten songs that are requests that I've not practiced this or played this in a year. But I'll so give it a go. It might it might be eighty percent, but they're not really going to so notice. The Dunham thing is, I'm sure we've got about three hundred songs in our repertoire. That's that's but that's what we've got at, at our Arsenal. But I tell you one thing, Ian, we've tried different sets. We've honest, we've, <laughs> we've tried and tested them, mate. And I tell you, when we keep going back to the same set list, you know why? Because it's a formula, man. It works. So it's here, music. Well, here's another thing then, right? I don't know if this is the same for weddings, but playing the pubs. Yep. See if you have a new song yes. that comes out yep. by, I don't know, an artist today, right? Yep. Massive song. Yep. I'm going to give you an example, right? So you've got Castle on the Hill. Yes. By Ed Sheeran, right? Yes. I'm not an Ed Sheeran fan. Song was actually all right. Good song, nice. right? Now, you played it in the pubs. Folk loved it. Yep. Right. Six months later, folk still loving it. Right. You're getting to a, a, a year after it's came out. Yep. Mm, it's, it's starting to sound a bit tired. Mm-hmm. Right. You go and play. I don't know. Let, let's say you go and play "Paint It Black." Yep. Or um, by Credence, or you go and play "Bad Moon Rising." Yep something like that right it still goes down great yep and yet it's been getting played for 50 years hi right why is I feel new songs have a shelf life absolutely is it a nostalgia thing it, it, what, so, oh, for the older songs are they better established is it just people are brought up with them what is it that so, makes new songs they, they don't seem to have uh, they don't seem to last the same as the older songs. So, I've certainly noticed this, especially <coughs> in the set list. And the set list are really interesting. You mentioned that. Yep. And again, Ed Sheeran is one of the ones that they uh, be. Castle Hill is one of the ones that we can go back to. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, so Shotgun by George Ezra. Yes. I had to get rid of that. Why? Because it's hard. It's time. It's it's done. Um, that and a bunch of other songs. Another one that hold back the river. Hope it's hold back the river. Uh, James Bay. Yeah. See so that was. Massive, uh, massive, but that just sound, uh, it sounds tired, and, again, and it's not that old a song. So personally, again, come from a, from a music theory point of view, my kind of analysis of it throughout the years. Even you take a Beatles song, let's you take a Beatles song like "If I Fell," "If I Fell in Love mm-hmm. with You," would you see? You look at the chord progression of that song. Me man, it's incredible. That song, yep. that's a single, right? See how hard this night single. Uh, help single. Yeah. When you look at the chord structure of those songs and compare it to pop songs nowadays, mate, pop songs. Well, four chords, and again, nothing wrong with four chords. Four chords work because they work for Johnny Cash. But you, if you do a lyric analysis of let's say Beyonce, mm-hmm. so put this way, let's take Umbrella, Rihanna. Yeah. Umbrella, Ella, Ella, Ella. Yeah, it's fucking much, great that, isn't it? Not only is there not much thought put into it, I bet you if I had the artist 
and you've had another four or five songwriters sat Correct. on the table, and that's what they came up with. Correct. And then you go and get Freddie Mercury, who comes up with Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Rhapsody. You like, know what I mean, man? You can it's the two. unbelievable. And again, yep. I think, I think music, pop. Sorry, I think popular music has got more simpler as the years go on. You take time signatures. Time signatures have even changed over the years. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, you would get some songs that might have like some money. Pink Floyd. Do 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 do. Seven, uh, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, four, seven, eight timing. Mm-hmm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. No, no, you're talking four, four nowadays. Like yeah. one, two, three, four, five. You're, you're, you're now talking wagon wheel. What again? I mean that, that that's that's turned into the that's turned into the new brown eyed girl. <laughs> Wait, it's so interesting. You say brown eyed girl. We stopped playing brown eyed girl. Why? Because we were pissed off at playing it, but. Again, people see when you're away, people people request it. People love it. Times in pub, and, and they're they're so genuine when they come up. Yep. But they, you you'll be playing a song, you'll finish, and somebody will come up. Hey, is, is it any chance you could play wagon wheel? <laughs> and, and you're like, aye, all right, I'll, I'll do it. And you're like, I want to kill myself. I, I hate yeah. this song. I've got, I've got <laughs> and you that. know what? It was, a, it was an alright song, <laughs> but seeing you've played it 500 times. Oh, this is it. It's just it's like, it's those same I've, four chords mate, over got, and over. Well, I've got a great story. Ugh, I'm sure I'll be fine with it. <laughs> so, Liam's live album, that yep. I just mixed. So, live album, you want to get some of the crowd noises and all that. Play Wagon Mule. <laughs> mate, right at the very end, and it was a great crowd noise that were chanting away with yep. his song, fucking brilliant. And it must be a lassie thing to the mic. And God love her, no, I mean, she's there to enjoy the gig. She's of there, you know what I mean? Yeah, like we, we, we all would be. I know you hear this, Liam, Liam, wagon! And it's right, and I couldn't put it in. I was like, I need to cut this great audience sound because somebody's requesting wagon wheel. But that's what, the funnest, I'm saying obviously new songs don't last. That one yep. has lasted. Oh, and, totally. And it's one of those ones where I don't enjoy playing it. Yep. I know that if I play it, it gets a good reaction. Not totally, man. It's one of them. And, and it's weird because why why do some songs get a good Great, reaction yeah. and some songs don't? See the many times people, or the many times I'll be at home mm-hmm. and I'm like, I really like this band, I really like this song, I'm going to learn it. This is going to go down great. You go to the pub and it's just tumbleweed. It's, 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 it's so... It just does not hit. Yeah. And then see how many times I do a, a song where I would class it as a filler. I don't want to do, a, you know, hit after hit. I, I, need, oh, a, course, I need a couple yeah, of songs that are like, 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 I need a, I need a, a few songs that, you know, gives you a five minute breather. Yep. I'll just fire this in to, to open up the set a wee bit. Yep. And it goes down amazing. I'm like, this song so, is, is a nothing. One song in I my know, opinion. One song I noticed that uh, worked with David, David Eden and I. And again, I treat it like a, a wee filler, but it's one of my, I love it, it's a great tune. I see the action it gets, it's uh, the song the, by The Calling, Wherever You Will Go. Yep. I'll go wherever you will go, yeah, yeah. Up that, <laughs> doesn't sound like that obviously, but, um, and it's not that you play something like that, which, for me and David, it gives us a wee blow, it gives yep. us a wee, right, let's calm down, then we're going to be me and Rabbit, we'll be me and they can a crazy little thing or something like that. Thing, yeah, I, yeah. And it's, it's, it's incredible. So I remember I used to play with Liam, Mumford and Sons. A uh, Little Lion Man. Yeah. And again, that was another song. It was massive. Massive. You don't hear anybody doing Mumford and Sons at all. No, nope, totally. But the, the setup that we had, I can't remember it. It must have been maybe it ended on the same chord that the next song started because we always Aye. played that and we'd be going to Come Together by the Beatles. Oh, right, because oh, it's yeah. on the D minor, right, 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 right got you, yeah. Personally, I was like, come together, it's oh, a boring right. uh, song. The, the reaction, that the people loved it. Yep. But I'm like, it's weird how some songs, you're just like, like this is going to be great. But then another thing you get in pubs is like, someone came up, and it wasn't that long ago, and there was, they said to us, can you, can you play some uh, Rory Gallagher? Fucking right. Right, okay. And I'm like, well... I, can, I could actually play one of his songs. I had it actually. Right. But, but the, other than you, nobody in the pub knows it. Yeah. Right, so you've, you've got to end up picking, you know, I can't do that. I've got to go and do stand by See, me I, because I've got to play. I'm, I'm getting paid to you're entertain paid the pub. Then, exactly. Right, exactly, so you, man. So you have to then settle on, I mean, 
you've probably got three quarters of your set list mm-hmm. is just standards, and yep. then you can maybe throw in a couple. You know, I'll try this one. I'll try that. What I try to do um, is, you know, everybody does crazy little thing called Love by Queen. Yep. So I'm going to do Fat Bottom Girls by Queen because like, right, okay. everybody knows it. Yep. But I'm going to just do something slightly, so slightly different. different, but not too different. They wouldn't get it. Aye, exactly. I mean that that's something that I do miss. Playing in a wedding band. I mean I played in a wedding band for what for instance, about 50 years now. I mean that's something that I do miss is being able to try go, things. It's just let's fling in that because you right. can't do all this off. The best band. one was somebody came up. Now, I think I've maybe done Folsom Prison at every gig uh-huh. in the last 12 years. Right, okay. Right. I can do it in my sleep. Yep. Someone came up, can you do Erin by Johnny Cash? <laughs> and I was like, I need bother. And I said, uh, I thought to myself, I think I'll play the heart instead, instead of... Right, okay. I played it. And they were like, I've never heard of that, can you do Folsom Prison? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you think about heart. I mean, the one help. And I'm like, it's only one of the most famous, his I, famous exactly, songs. Exactly. No, I mean, that was a uh, Trent Reznor that wrote that. By Fairfax uh, Nails. I've never heard of that. Can you do Folsom Prison? Aye, it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? It's like you, you try and change them up. I mean, I've, I've got a, a couple of mates that they got together with guitars and they were they were playing quite obscure Beatles songs, but again, nobody nobody knew what the Beatles. Yeah, songs I mean, as I say, more, my favourite like, bands, The Doors. Yeah. So many good songs. No point playing them if nobody in the pub knows totally. them. And and you can get away with maybe Roadhouse Blues. Absolutely. Occasionally I'll maybe throw in, you know, uh, Lover Madness. Lover Madness, right? Say that, yeah. I'll maybe very occasionally, depending right, on the through. crowd. No, no. Um, Hello, I love you. Oh, nice. Right. Yeah. But and I think I've done once or twice Riders on the Storm, and it's been a quiet gig. Yep. Right. But other, I mean, you can't, you can't. Could you imagine doing a, the? the the Unknown Soldier. Could you imagine doing the Unknown Soldier? <laughs> is it, this is the end. <laughs> is it all? Fifteen oh. minutes later, you're still you're still yeah. going on and on. But again, poetry. I mean, I, I mean, I, as musicians, I, and I think that's that, that's what I came as lucky. We can appreciate something that's been into a song, such yeah. as like the end. Yeah. I mean that to me, that song's fucking genius. It's like fucking wow. But the other thing, see about pub gigs especially. It's like you've got to take your hat off to someone that does a pub gig, right? See even totally. if it's see even if, if it's not your style that they're playing. See even if you're like, mm, I, don't, I don't really, I don't really like their voice. Or, I mean, see to turn up to a pub, totally, man. right? And you're stone cold sober because you're you're turning up with all your gear in your car, yep. right? You're going into a pub, you set up, and you're the centre of attention. You, you are making more noise than anybody else in the pub yep and you're there for three hours and you've got to deal with people talking to you annoying you asking for stuff it's like it's hard work but it's it's almost like seeing you watch someone playing darts snooker tennis football anything like that if they're good at it it may, they make it look easy again Ian. and i don't think people appreciate and then obviously your wedding band is just a step up from that i mean whatever you're doing there it's a, the, it's a level higher. The funny thing is, for me, as I say, so pub gigs, that was my apprentice, as I say, yeah. we're playing my dad and all that. I think what I was trying to say was what annoys me is when, when people say that they think it's below them because it's covers. Def, fuck that. that Rather me, than mate, originals. It's and more I'm like, difficult. It's more difficult to play for a crowd in a pub than it is for a wedding. It's certainly my experience anyway. It's, mm-hmm. certainly, it's more difficult. To You've got the crowd on your side before you even play the first thing at a wedding. Exactly. Um, what I have noticed is, so as a plane up at Calder with my dad and all that when I was younger, I had a, a, through the years kind of playing with them, I had a really good understanding. I could I could point out the guy that wants to be heard. I could point out the fucking drunk. I could point out the arsehole. The one that should have stopped getting served before you even Correct. set up. And the, my favourite one, my absolute favourite one, is the one that thinks they know how sound works. Mm-hmm. You need to turn your vocal up in a bit more treble. I, I play Magic Fader, you ever played Magic Fader? Well, <laughs> when I started doing the solo gigs, right, I, I would always, my dad was always interested yep. in it, right, and I would always write on my phone the, the stupid things that people say to you at gigs, yep. right, and uh, drinks are a terrible <laughs> thing, let's put it that way, right, Aye. Uh, 
and I was doing a gig one time and a guy came up I'm not trying to be uh, rude <laughs> but <laughs> but right, but uh, your guitar sounds awful alright I don't know he's like I don't know if it's out of tune or it just sounds terrible if I didn't to tell you it tells do, me do you play guitar oh no I've never touched a guitar in my life <laughs> alright but yeah, it sounds terrible right aye Give me two settings, right? I'm not doing anything, right? Aye, I'm just, magic like, fader, magic I'm just fader. like typing imaginary stuff, right? Yep. Start playing five minutes later. How's that sound? Hundred times better. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> no, I mean, no, yeah. totally, man. It's not, and it's, I, it does my nothing. Don't be wrong, right? There has been times, but I've been at a gig, and I've heard a guitar, and I'm like, that's the man. But, but I tell you what, I keep that shut. Why? Yep. Because the guys that are going to do a job, he takes. Unless you say, he was to turn around, uh, unless you, like sometimes. If he has opinion. Sometimes if um, if there's a, like like I done a gig just the other day, and it was Sean McNally. Do you know Sean? Sean Chantel. Sean 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 Sean, Sean McNally, young guy. Again. Right. But I'd said to him, you do, He he was playing right before me, mm-hmm. and I said, you doing a you doing a gig after this, or are you just going home? He's like, you're just going home. I was like. Can you do me a favour? Go and just hang back for like. Go and just listen to my first song, and go and look, because it's hard to hear sometimes Absolutely. when you're, you're playing. You're behind the speakers. You're, aye, and I says go and tell us if, I need, if the guitar needs to come up, if it needs more bass, middle, treble, vocals, yep. a stomp box, whatever it is. And it's great, but you've no always got that. Absolutely. But it, it, I'm asking him because he's a musician. He knows exactly what sounds good. What right. he's, he's not a punter in the pub yep. that yep. has just no got a clue. But unfortunately, you've not always got that. Totally. And again, it's that respect thing as well. So, like, like if I'm playing like a gig, not, not so much now, I guess the other thing I miss at gigs where I can rely on somebody that knows me and somebody that saw the band mm-hmm. all the time. But, like, say, like, my dad was in the audience. I'm like, dad. And, like, you can't yeah. you, you the signals yourselves. I'll go like that to somebody who I know in the audience. Be like, mm. They'll point to that, point to the member. Oh, oh you won't write, okay, that volume yeah. up. Look at me, up a wee bit, okay. <laughs> and, and you start to know these wee cues, but what does my tits right in is when you get somebody coming up, just exactly the example that you said yeah. to me, who's clearly not got a fucking clue yeah. about a fucking guitar, but they're trying to tell you exactly what it sounds, and the minute you kid on your turn on a wee knob, yeah. then they get the impression that, oh, that's much better than that. Yeah. Psychoacoustics, mate, that's what you call that, psychoacoustics. But uh, you're obviously playing in, in the wedding band. I have played two weddings right okay me and Liam right right and it's still one of the funniest stories right uh huh goes up north it was, it was Loch Lomond somewhere uh-huh. I think it was right we goes up drive up and it's a it's a castle that's got no electricity right <laughs> so it's all <laughs> it's all candle lit but it's like it looks like a Brian Adams music video alright alright nice nice right and, it, and there's this wee waiting room so we, we have to wait and before we can get in and get set up there's a guy there who's going to be the we're playing for maybe two hours and then there's a DJ yep after it and, uh, and we, nice knew, we knew the guy as well right so the three of us are just sitting there because we can't take our gear in yet maybe it was where they were eating mm-hmm. and they were waiting for it to clear yep. or something right yep. so sitting there in this little waiting room and it was infested with midges we were just like eating alive right and then I was like this is just um, this is killing me like covered in like midge bites finally get in and it was some a lassie from Glasgow right. getting married I think the guy was from Sweden <laughs> okay right but I think they'd been living in Sweden but they came back came because back her family them. from Glasgow okay yep but I think it was pretty much her fa- family from Glasgow and then it was just everybody else was from Sweden right, right? <laughs> so we're like well we'll just we'll, we'll two hours to play all our belters we'll just we'll, 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 we'll do this right so start playing and it was just like everybody's just staring at us it, it was like you, you would expect people to maybe start dancing Aye, to that. Dance I, I, don't know, I don't applause. know if this is maybe what they, they didn't do in Sweden, but everyone, everyone is just like staring at you. 
And I was like, this is awkward. Awkward, awkward. Right? awkward. Plain. And then it's like, everyone's clapping. <laughs> so they're all enjoying it. You're like, that's great, right? And then there's this guy. Uh, like a few songs in, it was like the 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 groomsman. Right? No, sorry, no, the groom, the, the like the usher or oh, the right, best okay. man or something. Right, right. Uh, can I get him to sing? I was like, eh, well, no. He, he, he was uh, had a bit too much to drink, but he was going on and on and on. I, but I think he was. He did a bit. Of, I don't know if it was karaoke or something, yep. but I was like, right, okay. Whatever the song was, could we get him off the stage? <laughs> <laughs> right. He, there were like four or five songs, and I'm like, fucking hell. I was like, get fucking this guy. Just like a pedal, like. Hell of it. No, no, we're playing. You're playing, right, right, okay. He's, he's saying, like, can you play this song, and we could play them all. Mm-hmm. But it's just like we couldn't get the microphone back off the no. guy, right? And then it was, uh, it got to this point in the gig where the, the groom had came up to us and said, Listen, we've got this tradition in Sweden uh-huh. that we do. Um, it's something to do with like sparklers. You hand out sparklers. And, oh, yeah. and, 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 uh, and I think it's something like they hold it, they, everyone sort of holds it up as it, and the people walk through or something oh, right, like okay. that, right? And it was like, Can you do that song? Uh, you know that line up, line, line up. up. This is a uh, right. snow patrol. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, "Can you can you do that song?" But when you start it, I'll start handing them out. Mm-hmm. But you'll need to just play it, keep playing the intro until I get the signal because I'll need to <laughs> hand them out and light them all. Right. Right. All right. Right. All right. So he goes five minutes later of, and we're like, and we haven't started singing yet. It was, it was five minutes. And I was like, and it was like, there must have been like 300 sp- things. And it was just smoke everywhere. Like, ah. I couldn't even see Liam. He was standing next to me. I'm like, that. Is he still there? Is he still there? Oh, I was oh, like, bloody. <laughs> Fire up. You mentioned smoke. You mentioned smoke, Dean. A memory that comes to my mind just again playing with my dad's band. Yep. So this is back when obviously technology was new to, to pub bands, i.e., the smoke machine. I made my dad buy the smoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. As you do. Yep. So this was 90, 97, that's supposed to be 97, 98, about that time. My dad got this smoke machine and we're playing a place, I'm sure it was called, it was in Dune. I, I, I want to say the Hogshead, but the Hogshead was the old number two in Stirling. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it was a place in Dune. So that's my... <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a foot switch or a, or a hand switch. Something that sets it off. Something that sets yeah, it yeah. off. <laughs> I think when they stopped, <laughs> I think the fire engines are running on there. The full place going shut down, I had to get evacuated. We freaking, oh, fire! Fire, man. But just for, I mean, and again, that's something that I'm, I, I, I really appreciate. It's one, number one, see the stories, I mean, the stories that you and I can have tonight yeah. regarding uh, just different gigs and what have you. I, I tell you one thing, uh, you know, I'll be forever grateful for that band I was in with my dad honest I'll be forever mm. grateful with that man the best story and I've actually got a recording of it somewhere right, right. now as you know myself and Liam yep. played number two Baker Street yes. Thursday night for eight years, years or something yep. like, like a long time right and uh, I had a uh, it's old looking now it was a Korg 16 track alright you know what uh, I mean? was that the, the Korg D8 was that D8 yeah, or D16 D8 it was called or 16 or MK whatever and uh, and I would take it along and record the gigs yep and mix it and we could do like, music um, YouTube videos and stuff like that uh-huh. and uh, been doing this for years uh-huh. record a certain song record a full gig just whatever it was we were doing mm-hmm. and I can't remember what happened but there was one gig Liam was there like setting up yep and I set stuff up and then he, he got called away. I don't know, maybe maybe Fiona was pregnant at the time or mm-hmm. it was something like that, but all his stuff was there. <laughs> and it was like, I can't, I can't do the gig. But Ian Whitfield was there. Perfect. So he's like, Wait, well, can you cover the gig? Just, just use all my stuff. It's all set up. It's good to go. Aye. I says, I'll even get up and do some songs. And Aye. But I says, Well, it's already set up. Do you want me just to record the gig for you so that you've got. A, a gig Aye, you can use it for whatever you want aye right so done this for years with Liam aye. without issue <laughs> and stop <laughs> steps in Whitfield right it's the only gig I recorded he <laughs> got in a fight with somebody oh you're joking <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like only only, only witty. Witty. No. right 
But it wasn't his fault, right? So it was that thing where someone had wandered across the road from Drith and Ebers. They got thrown out or refused because yep. they were too drunk. <laughs> they came in. The girl behind the bar had said, uh, no, I'm not serving you, you know, you're, you're too drunk. And of all the people you could do this to, every, we'll to of, of, of any musician in central Scotland, yep. the guy in a huff decided, to I'm going to go out, uh, leave Baker Street, but what I'll do is I'll pull the microphone over <laughs> uh, for the, who the, to the musician while they're playing, right? Oh. And it's all, it's all recorded. <laughs> and I want to hear this. And it's that thing where it is like, it, it, like he, he actually broke his guitar. He, he threw his guitar off. Yeah, like, well. like he was already choking the guy against the wall before the guitar even hit the ground. And as <laughs> I remember, it was a, uh, it was a uh, James sit down. Oh. <laughs> right, and he's like, he's starting with the Z chord. Da, 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 da. And then it was like. Sing myself to sleep a song from I'm gonna fucking kill you! <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the next day Liam was like, oh, I got a call from him, he's like, it wasn't my fault then. <laughs> and he's like, what happened? And I was like, it was just eight years, no bother. First ever time recording Witty. And you know what? I've, so seen what? I've seen Witty play a million times yep. before it. I've seen him play after it, I've never seen it happen. Yeah. The one time in all the no, recording no, it up and they got it recorded. Why and I have got you? it somewhere. Oh, that no, is amazing. Hear that. No, I love what it bits, man. As you say, that's. Well, I like, of, that, of all the folk today. All the folk today, today, like, 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 let's say. No, I love what it bits. It was, it was just one, it was hilarious. It was brilliant. I was like, this is amazing. Yep. To, to, this is the sort of thing you go, I wish I could have recorded that because <laughs> that was brilliant. I actually recorded it and I've right. got it somewhere and oh, it was like perfect so recording as well. Oh, Brian, no, we need. I need to get a listen to that line. That was, that was great, man. I oh, know. Absolutely super. But uh, we're going to do a part two, because okay. we've still got loads to talk oh, about, right? Talk about me. Uh, but before you go, right? Yes. Mount Rushmore, your, who is your four musicians, bands, songwriters? Who's the four that you have up there that you just go for? Just to you, they are perfect. Okay, do Elvis, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Eminem. There you go. Simple as that. Simple as that, mate. Right, Barry. Mate, thank you so much. Until next time, I look forward to part two. Yeah, wise did. And I'll find that recording of uh, Ian Whitfield for you. Right.